Right. So that's great yeah, today. Okay, get that okay. The close of my committee. I like it. Okay, Eleanor, are you okay? Okay, okay. So we'll call the meeting to order. I'll accept the motion to approve. Uh, I guess I would say both agendas. We'll talk about that in a second. So, so moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So I'm going to just have to refer to staff which pages we're going to be looking at. I do know that Tucker's presentation is page four to eight on the on the uh, different agenda. So, so we'll just kind of go one at a time. It's one agenda, it's just two packets. I know, but the pages are different for each. Right. It's, you know, so. Okay, so um, I'll accept the motion to approve the minutes of April 25th. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Anyone <laughs> abstaining? No. Okay. Um, all right, so public comment. Hi, Mary. How are you? How are you? Um, so any public comment at any time is fine if it's not a public hearing. Um, so, Tucker, do you want to sort of take over a little bit on this? It is. This. this is the only thing I don't like. Turning around. Yeah, I think this one does work. All right. Um, so Tucker Holland, Housing Specialist for the Town. Thank you all for the opportunity to give you a little bit of an update on what's been happening around housing in uh, recent times. And I, this isn't really a structured presentation. It's really yeah. an opportunity for you all to ask questions as we go along here. But I thought I'd hit on a few points. But I cannot begin without first congratulating my fellow MBA, <laughs> Wendy Hudson. Um, <laughs> congratulations, Wendy. Uh, so it, it, as you all, I'm sure, were at uh, the recent town meeting and at the ballot, um, over $25 million of funding was approved by the voters uh, in support of different housing measures to be administered by the Affordable Housing Trust with oversight from the select board. Um, that obviously is a big step forward for our community in providing much needed resources toward addressing the housing crisis here. The Affordable Housing Trust is presently assembling an advisory committee in particular to advise on the implementation of the neighborhood first um, funding, which is really the $20 million article you all are familiar with. Um, that committee will be comprised of a representative from the select board, or hopefully a representative from your board, the finance committee, the land bank, town administration, two members of the trust, and then two members from the year-round community, as well as a resident of our seasonal community. And this group will be charged with making recommendations around defining the program elements, criteria for property selection, and criteria for both development, renovation, and management RFPs. And following, the trust actually has a meeting tomorrow at 10 a.m. And following that, you all will be receiving a letter asking for a, a designee to that committee. Um, other items uh, are recently, Richmond had the local action unit applications submitted in conjunction with the town to DHCD, approved by DHCD, and basically that paves the way, that's a major milestone, and paves the way for their units to count on our SHI list. And in particular, of interest to the community, in addition to the actual housing it will provide, is the opportunity for it to provide two years of safe harbor. And so what is needed to get to that 
point of safe harbor is for Richmond to pull 48, uh, excuse me, building permits for 48 or more of the apartment units. And at this stage, they've pulled permits for approximately 20 and anticipate pulling the additional permits over the course of the next couple months, is my understanding. So that is, uh, that is a key thing, and we'll get into in a few minutes um, more on the SHI list management and safe harbor. Um, in addition, the Affordable Housing Trust has facilitated the inclusion of four new rental units at Seven Surfside, a project developed by Housing Nantucket. Um, and there are a couple of other <coughs> updates to our SHI list that are in process at DHCD, including some of the beach plum units, as well as an additional unit of housing Nantucket's at 18 Tacoma. And what's up on the screen at the moment is the actual SHI list. And I just wasn't, I wasn't from sure if you all were familiar with what this uh, mysterious list looks like, but, but this is it, as published by DHCD. And um, they don't have a routine formula to when it is updated, but it was updated in February of this year. And at present, our count is 132 toward the 490 that we are required to have, or the 10% of our year-round housing units. Um, we recently had a meeting up at DHCD with the associate director, who's also the director of policy, um, Alana Murphy. They're very interested in what we're doing down here across the board and are very uh, eager to be working with us as we implement some of the plans coming out of town meeting, neighborhood first, and so forth. Um, we have a new addition to what we're calling the housing office. Uh, Ken Bogrand was re recently hired as the real estate specialist for the town. And he and I have worked closely in the past on the housing bank bill and in Ken's capacity as chair of the CPC, but very much looking forward to working closely with Ken going forward. Um, as you all may be aware, we are also a housing choice community. Uh, we received that designation last year from the state, and we are anticipating the opportunity to apply for a grant under the Housing Choice Grant Program. The details of the criteria for those grants are expected to be coming out in the next week or two. And that could provide something on the order of 250 to 500,000 toward an eligible housing project. Um, we, the Affordable Housing Trust is also working very closely uh, and in fact has engaged the Nantucket data platform to work on a study that will give the trust insight, much greater insight into the supply and demand of housing at a variety of income levels in order to serve our year-round community. And um, we believe that this information is going to be instrumental in helping direct the policies around the spending of the monies that we had talked about a few moments ago. Um, with regard to other projects I mentioned Rich in Richmond uh, a moment ago. Uh, as you all are aware, the ZBA is doing yeoman's work in reviewing and making a decision with, reg with regard to Surfside Crossing. Um, and Six Fairgrounds, the 64 unit rental project uh, proposed for next door to the fire station is still an appeal with the neighbors. We did recently receive a very favorable ruling by the judge in that case, ruling across the board in favor of the town and the developer, but the neighbors have since appealed that decision. Um, so, Mike, if we could go to the next, sorry, next, yeah. So, 
This is a table um, with respect to shy list management, as we're terming it. Uh, obviously, there is need that we want to address, and that is first and foremost the most important thing. But um, you know, I guess coming off of mentioning Surfside Crossing, I think most everyone would agree that we want to be addressing our need in a manner that fits with the community um, and that can be embraced um, by all or darn close to all. Um, so when we are in a period of safe harbor, we are in a much stronger position of controlling our own destiny, if you will. So this chart is meant to give some insight into how we might be thinking about remaining in a period of safe harbor over the course of the next five years anyway. And by the end or near the end of that point, the 2020 census will have been completed. And um, according to our meeting at DHCD last week, they anticipate updating our 10% number in 2022. So the census itself takes place in 2020, but it's a little bit of time before that translates into a new 10% figure for us. But once we receive that figure, it will stand for another 10 years. Um, so you can see on the chart, um, the orange is intended to illustrate how, how we might reasonably think about remaining in a safe harbor period and which projects might be suited to doing that. I mentioned Richmond a moment ago that really is on the cusp of provide, providing that initial period of two years of safe harbor. Two years is the maximum that you can receive at any given point in time. And it's very important that we are planning well in advance to be teed up to extend on the heels of any period of safe harbor expiring. And the rules are right. very, uh, they're not always entirely clear and they're subject to some interpretation. But what is clear about them is you need to create, create 24 units, in our case, of housing in the same year in which you are requesting safe harbor in order to get one year. If in our case, because we have a, a approved housing production plan, it's li we only need to do 24. We Otherwise, we need to do 48. If we do 24, we get one year. If we do 48, we get two years. Creation doesn't mean they all have to be built yeah. and occupied yeah. in that year. Creation has different definitions to DHCD depending on the method of permitting for the project. So for instance, if 40B project that is approved under the comprehensive permit avenue, the town actually receives credit when the comprehensive permit that is approved is filed with the town as of that date. It receives, in the case where it might be eligible for two years, it receives one year right away. And as long as the building permits are pulled within that first year, it can extend to the second year. I don't want to get take up too much time and make it too confusing, but I thought to share a little bit about the fact that it looks fairly simple up there, but it's actually fairly complex. Um, but if the point here is we, the trust and um, I think everyone working on the housing um, efforts on the town side is thinking about how do we 
both address the need and manage our periods of safe harbor as we move forward here. Just below the, the colored chart, you can see an, an approximation of what we might, where we might be in terms of number of units toward that 490 and what it is that's contributing below that to get to those figures. Um, again, these are, these are estimates. You know, I think they are reasonable estimates, but uh, sometimes you hear uh, someone say, golly, you know, we're never going to get to 490. It's impossible. Well, this might illustrate otherwise. Um, further down, you can see the note about the 24 and the 490. And the, at the bottom of the chart is really intended for the trust, but it shows a little bit about the financial resources that might be required uh, in order to affect what we see at the top there. Finally, the last slide, Mike, is this is this is a, a depiction of where the um, you know affordable quote unquote housing is presently around the island. Um, this would include, you can see in the notes, uh, you know, some unit, th this is not only SHI um, units, but all income restricted housing. Um, so uh, this is more or less a, a, an accurate representation of where we're at today. There are, you know, some onesies, twosies um, that uh, are being in the process of being updated to this. Um, but with that, I might kind of open it up for questions. Yep. Does anyone uh, want to start, David? Um, just a question about the, the Landmark House and Academy Hill. That we lose those in two this year? We lose those numbers on your first chart? That it, it says that affordability expires in 2019. Yeah, so they, the way, okay. those are subject to kind of an annual uh, reconfirmation of them continuing to be on the list. They, they've been on there for quite a while. They're not <laughs> anticipated to drop off. So it's just filing paperwork to have them continue, is that? It's, yeah, and it's, um, as you can see, DHD has sort of a special asterisk in terms of how they um, keep track of those particular units. Okay. But they're not, they're not expiring. They're not disappearing. Yeah, yeah, Good. Yeah. All right, thanks. Yeah. John. Uh, similar question, Tucker, in the, uh, the graph. Uh, the, I guess the graph oh, yeah. chart. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 2019, you showed 23 units for uh, Surfside Crossing. And then the following year, uh, 2020, you show a negative 23. Yep. So it goes from 215 to 313 with the other uh, 57 and 64 units from Richmond and Tacoma. Looks like you have 121 minus that 23, netting us 98. So the 215 plus the 98 equals the 313 for two, 2020. Yep. What's could you explain why we got it and then we took it away? Is that based on the projection, but they're not built yet? So yeah. So <clears throat> what that it, it's a very good question. So it's kind of a conservative um, uh, way of representing that this presumes based on. Uh, ZBA deliberations to date and so forth, that there might be a comprehensive permit issued with a lot of conditions. And based on the 92 unit plan, which is what the developer, I understand, has asked them to kind of rule on, that would equate to 23 units. Again, like I said, when a comprehensive permit is issued, we immediately get the credit for it regardless if it's appealed oh, by wow. either side. So this sort of assumes that. we're gonna, okay. something's gonna be approved. This is sort of the number that's out there at the moment. It could be different than that. 
But it also presumes someone's going to appeal and not be happy with whatever was issued. So then 2021, maybe we'll get another credit if they if the project ended up going through? So if you go a little, yeah, 221 <laughs> sort of assumes, and that may or may not be a reasonable time frame for you know, the legal process to play out depending on who's un unhappy and how unhappy. But it, this, again, it's, this is the best guess sort of a thing. It presumes that, okay, it's gotten resolved in some fashion, the project has started, and it's starting to contribute, and I think I've got like five, five. units a right. year there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you get the initial credit like in a lump sum. Okay. Yeah. It's confusing. And, and, that's why, <laughs> and that's why you have the minus 64 on Tacoma. That's basically the same reason that John and you were talking about. Uh, no, it's not negative. No, there's no just, minus. No, there's a positive in that. Yeah. Which means there's no, a minus the there, wrong, though. That's a dash. Oh. Yeah, here's the positive. Oh, oh okay. I see. Yeah. I got it. Okay. Um, does anyone else have any questions for Tucker? Uh, just yes. one question that I'm not familiar with. Maybe everybody else is. Old fire station, 24 units. We don't really know what. So that so the that's just an example. <coughs> the uh, the select board kind of a, the select board had asked the trust like could the old fire station site be used for housing, and so we engaged a firm out of Providence and kind of did a study to answer that question, and they came up with a concept, not like a plan that's intended to be proposed as conceptually designed, if you will, but the, they answered the question, that site could support 30 units in addition to um, whether it was community space or nonprofit space or even retail space on the first floor of uh, the buildings that would be a part of that. So the select board had said, you know, you know, this, the concept of using that site is interesting and we would like this to be developed further. So this is reflecting that if something were to be done there that provided at least 24 units, that, that would be a year of safe harbor in and of itself. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Leslie. So is this a floating number, if you will, because each year, how does this affect each year when you have 300 or 500 or 600, whatever the, I don't know how many building permits go out and how many new houses are being built. Doesn't that then accelerate the need for the percentage wise? If you have new houses, then you don't have the 10%. You know, every time you build more houses, then the number would go up. So it, it, the only thing that affects what we have to do for the 10% is the number of year round houses. So building permits in and of themselves mean nothing. But building permits for year-round houses do. But, yeah, but building permits typically aren't issued that way. They're, right. you know, so when, so for example, when we applied to be a housing choice community last year, we the, part of the requirement was to look at the number of building permits you'd issued over the last five years, the number of net new building permits. So when we looked at that number. For the prior five-year period, which I think was, I think the period was 2012 to 2017, we had issued net new 650 net new building permits. So, by the same token, so you need 65 houses. No, well, be, th that's net new, including seasonal homes. Oh, okay. So, by the same token, a woman named Judy Barrett who is a respected uh, consultant in the housing world in Massachusetts and beyond, had been hired in 2015 to do a workforce housing needs assessment. And at that point, she had looked at the period 2000 to 2000, excuse me, 2010 to 2015, and made the determination that in that period, we had lost 640 year-round residences in terms of either they previously had been rented year-round and and oh, then and then they rented them seasonally or yeah. what have so so my my honest like best assessment is if our uh, 49 our, our 490 number 
is just as likely to go down a little as it is to go up a little okay. following 2020. And I would be completely shocked if it swung by more than 20 units either direction. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else have any questions? No, uh, Bert. Yeah, I, um, when Ken Bogren announced that going out to look to buy houses for you, your trust, do you have any procedure set up? My, my question is, if he start, shows interest in a house and some young couple shows interest in the house, will he back off and let? So, so that's what I was getting at with the advisory committee that the trust is establishing again that we're very much planning for a member of your board to be have a representative you be a representative too but that advisory committee is going to be setting advising both the trust and really the select board on what the procedures should be and what the criteria should be um, so yes is kind of the answer where the trust isn't running out tomorrow morning to be spending from the 20 million if you will they they uh, everybody is committed to having a very thoughtful community engaged um, process to establishing you know how this is going to get translated have you guys contacted the shaker heights housing authority in, in ohio no but we we will because they been what they did years ago was instead of building new housing they went and bought existing housing yep. all over it and then put low-income families in it and it worked out fine yep um but they must have had they maybe developed procedures and policies that might help you get a head start that's thank you <laughs> my sense is who they're going to be competing with is the second home buyers I think you know, I don't yeah, think the young, they should pull back from the second home buy, but they should. Well, no, but I think that the, the, that's who's going to be buying sort of Hoopa Farm and Fairgrounds and everything else. That's who's targeting it now. And so I think that the, these guys, you know, are if we go into this, I think we'll be. We aren't really going to be. We might, in, in rare instances, be competing against you know, and they back yeah, off. Yeah. But I'm, my guess is they're going to be looking at lots that are going to be targeted for you know, sort of the, <coughs> the builder special with the pool and the second home and put 18 people in here on, on, a, on a holiday weekend. Yeah. So I think they're gonna be targeting those kind of properties. I don't think it'll be, I think it'll be a net positive yeah. if they do it right. But well, they wouldn't be looking for the home for the swimming pool. For, for no, they wouldn't be, but they're gonna be competing with people that are looking to do the rebuild. I mean, yeah, yeah. That's, and I think that's the one I, yeah. I mean, I think this isn't the criteria per se, but you know, like they're, we've been, I think everyone's aware we've been losing inventory in traditionally year-round neighborhoods understandably in a way when yeah. you may have a long time year-round family uh, you know a, whether it's you know the fireman and the teacher or whatever the scenario who at some point when they go to retire what have you and maybe you're spending more time down south they can't ignore the tremendous appreciation in their real estate value but the next fireman and teacher aren't going to be able to afford, you know, stepping into that like off the street more than likely. So if we can sort of keep some of those in the, you know, in the family, I think that's kind of the general intention. Judith. Tucker, not to complicate things, but would you say just a few words in case people don't understand uh, what else is happening apart from shy units that uh, Part of what the trust is doing is also trying to deal with people in the middle that are kind of squeezed and, and say a little about that. Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, absolutely. So, I mean, I think part of what the trust is looking at. So, there's the twenty million dollar fund. There's also the the five million dollar fund from the CPC, as well as some additional monies that they trust already had, but not hadn't been enough to really do something um so i think they're looking at some opportunities for um home ownership for the middle income if you will that judith was describing the work that the data platform is doing for the trust is very much intended to illustrate the need at 
a variety of levels. So one thing, yeah, I think a lot of people would say, you know, the state makes things very challenging for the community with 40B, but one thing that they do do for communities that is a little bit of a help is they have a strong encouragement for rental programs. So when you do a rental program, as long as 25% of the units are at 80% AMI or less, the rest could be at market or they could be tiered at a variety of other levels, 150, 175, 120, all of them count, 100%. So I, I think the trust is um, uh, thinking about, you know, how can we both be meeting our SHI goals, but not all at 80%, um, doing it at a variety of levels that are gonna be helpful to our year round and workforce community. And the trust is also thinking about like our elder population and how can that fit into the mix of what we're creating. Perhaps the old fire station site would lend itself to having an elder uh, component to uh, what is developed there. He's talking about all of us, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you mentioned the data platform again. I was going to ask you, they, they're doing a good job. Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable. They were at the senior center meeting the other day. I forgot the girl's name. The information that they have is mind-boggling. Yeah. I mean. It's impressive. It's pretty good. I mean, I'm, I can't thank them enough for what they're doing. So does anyone else have anything before we move on to the next item? Or, Taku, thank you for um, thank you. what you're doing. And thank you for explaining the, the sort of the, you know, the nuts and bolts of this shy list thing. I hope it, it is sense. confusing. <laughs> Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you all for the opportunity. And thank you for mentioning the Shaker Heights folks. We'll follow up on that. Okay. Um, so I think, Mike, I think we need to go back to the other agenda because, the, because um, Lauren just walked in and I just looked at the one agenda doesn't have her item on it. So I, I think we'll zip back over to the the main packet has right. Right. No, I know. That's what I'm I mean. Sorry. No, it's okay. And, and this is good. This hey, listen. I, it keeps me on my toes here. I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Mike, you want to um, take us through the transportation program? Are we on page 37 to 211, right? Uh, correct. I think uh, for for these these discussions, these four items, uh, it starts on page 22. Okay. Um, and that starts with the uh, what we talked about at the uh, the last meeting, uh, which uh, you initiated a 21 day public review of a tip amendment uh, that was necessary uh, to add language to the tip regarding uh, performance management and specifically uh, performance targets identified in the NRTA's transit asset management plan. Uh, Staff didn't receive any public comments on this uh, amendment. It was pretty straightforward. Uh, therefore, staff recommends that the NPNC take action to approve the uh, federal fiscal year 2019 to 2023 TIP Amendment Number One and authorize the chair to sign the endorsement. So moved. That was quick, Brett. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, Okay, next, Mike. Uh, sure, this is the uh, the current, or uh, the next year's uh, transportation improvement program. Uh, you may recall that we don't have uh, any highway projects that are programmed into the, into the TIP, but we do have uh, NRTA operations uh, funding uh, in, the, in the TIP. Um, you, at the last, uh, at the April meeting, you did authorize uh, a 21-day uh, public review period uh, for this uh, uh, document. Okay. Um, so we would ask that, uh, based on receiving no public comments on the, uh, the draft tip, that uh, the NPDC take action to approve the uh, federal fiscal year 2020 through 2024 uh, mm -hmm. transportation improvement program and authorize the chair to uh, sign the endorsement. Yes. Fritz, go ahead. Do you want to 
No. A motion? Or no, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. I just had one question. Uh, we're talking about the plan that's in the original package? Uh, yes, that starts on page, well, page 28 has the notice, and then. What I've got says 37. Okay, well, this is. I'm, I'm going to refer to a page number, that's fine. 37 is the correct. Uh, yes, it starts on page 37. Okay. okay. My so apologies. Let's go to page 80. Thank you, Derek. Yep. Page, what, 85? Uh, 85, which I think is almost the last page. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, which page do you the, want to take us to? The schedule uh, of priorities. Yes, the uh, schedule of priorities, which is in the appendix on page yeah, 85 appendix. of your packet. Yep. Yes. And I'm looking at it. Just so everybody. Uh, um, I go ahead? Is anybody? No, sure? go ahead. No, it's yeah. fine, Chris. Go ahead. So the question that I have is, uh, so you have a list of priorities, and uh, in the uh, sixth column it says status, and uh, they're coded. <laughs> and uh, code E is project funded design to be initiated. And so my only, uh, my question is, under item six, four corners, and items are priority six, four corners, priority seven, fairgrounds on Old South Road. It says E, project funded design to be initiated. Can you clarify how is it, in what manner is it funded? Um, sh should I start with number six? Was that the first one you listed? Four corners. Uh, correct, The uh, that, that design project was funded with the chapter 90 funds to initiate the uh, preliminary, only preliminary design uh, on that project. That preliminary design consisted of a conceptual design process, which uh, those who are familiar with last summer, we actually initiated design on three roundabouts to look at design alternatives and figure out yeah. Yeah. which configuration would work best. That was the, uh, the peanuts and avocados and ultimately. <laughs> right. Uh, that was that's funny idea. if you understand what that means, but uh, <laughs> if you don't, that you're very confused. Because we, we met, we met uh, last week and went through some of these, and I got a lot of questions out. The sure. only reason I'm asking is it says E, and design, uh, let's see. Uh, so E says project funded design to be initiated. Mm -hmm. Is the, How is that different from C, designed, initiated, 25% design accepted? Uh, you're, you're probably correct. It probably should be a D, design did initiate, but it's not a preliminary design just yet. Uh, so that's a, uh, a that's a correction that needs to be made in the, the status from E to a D. Should well, be a D? Correct. Good catch. Well, it <laughs> All right, but, okay, go well, ahead. Well, which one are we, number six? Or number six. six. Uh, priority six. Four corners. Four corners? Four corners is high school. Yeah. Okay. So that should be a D. Correct. Okay. The same thing with the next one. Old fairgrounds at Old South Road. Uh, correct. That that's uh, the same. The the, des the preliminary design was initiated, but the uh, it's not complete. So it should be a D. Correct. Okay. I, I was just questioning as to whether these have been. If I read the chart, I'd say these have been funded, mm -hmm. and uh, that I just wanted to make sure that we were correct. That's not the case. Uh, design was funded. Design is funded. Yes, Correct. But not the whole project. Not the construction, no. Okay. Uh, well, no, because the rest of them, F's mean unfunded. Okay. Uh, no, well, we're on this, Mike. Good homework. <laughs> two, number two, Mike. Gotcha. <laughs> Thank you. Mike, number two, the Surfside Battle while we're on roundabouts. Sure. You got that as a C. Now, that was a tip project at one time I'm just trying to tip eligible project and it still is okay okay uh, that's why we never saw that one on the ballot for an override is because that one was sort of in the queue for a tip funding and we had already dedicated funding to to the intersection that okay. was four previous town meetings that addressed that right you know it's been a while when we had the, when we have the land then and now so okay and that preliminary design is Complete but not accepted. Uh, so that's uh, it's currently under review by DOT. I'm sure in the fall they'll have a design public hearing scheduled, and we can all participate in that. 
but um, it's not. Yeah. It, it hasn't been accepted, so we can't program it on the tip. Okay. Um, so back to the original um, motion. Vote for the 2020 and 24. Accept a motion to approve. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 With those changes. Um, okay. <laughs> Next, Mike. UPWP. Uh, thank you. And that begins. I'm not even. Uh, there's the letter, uh, page 101. Uh, that starts in the in the packet. Uh, again, with the tip, um, um, uh, there is a, a full copy of the UPWP in the packet uh, for, for your review. Uh, staff only uh, received comments from, from DOT. No public comments were received. Uh, uh, based on this, uh, staff recommends that the NBC take action to approve the FY20 Unified Planning Work Program and design the uh, chair to sign the endorsement you might want to change the um, um page with that stuff on it on 103. I'm not sorry? that that matters i mean it, i don't know how formal it is but you have the Director. chair we got to change some of the names on that you're right if that's going this. to the if that's going to the state yeah you gotta get it up to date no you're absolutely you're okay right. that's old that's old and it might be even older than a year, two years. Page 103 just needs to be updated a little bit, that's all. Correct. Okay, Mike? Yep. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, also, Mike, yes. uh, this is Derek on the line. Uh, the uh, comment letter, uh, the official comment letter we mailed out this morning to you, emailed out to you. So it, if you want to swap that out from the email exchange, it's the exact same content, but in an official form. It's well, going to be attached to you with the final document. Will do. Okay. Thank you. So you need a, a, a motion on this, Mike, for the closeout and the approval? Uh, once the uh, suggested edits are, are made, uh, uh, yes. So we can I, take I will, a vote with, with, with those changes, right, or no? Correct. We don't have to wait for the next meeting, right? No, not no, at all. Okay. Not at all. So, uh, with, so with the suggested edits, uh, staff would request to approve the FY20 uh, okay. Unified Planning Work Program and authorize the chair to uh, sign the endorsement. So, so with those changes, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Sec is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, Miss uh, Eleanor, thank you very much. Um, okay. Okay, though, the Human Services Public Transportation Plan, Mike. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is. Uh, what page is that on, Mike? That starts on page 131. Okay. And the, uh, the, the plan itself is, is also included, but I did provide a few summary slides. Uh, okay. Just for quicker reference. Oh, the green stuff. Okay. Um, the, the, the purpose of the plans outlined in the in, uh, in the document, but essentially it's to access uh, 5311 tra rural transit funds for uh, uh, elderly and disabled populations, essentially for uh, expanding services for the uh, paratransit. Um, Paula's here. I believe I'm saying all this correct. Okay. Um, if Paula disagrees, she'll jump up to the microphone, and you know I just said something bad. Uh, <laughs> The uh, comprehensive, uh, just so you know, the, the stakeholders that we work with for the uh, for this plan uh, consist of the Commission on Disabilities, Council on Aging, uh, staff from from Human Services, and uh, 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 and I believe there was, I believe we tried to reach out to the Community Collabor Collaborative. Uh, so that's essentially our our stakeholder group. Uh, the needs uh, are usually identified through some surveying process through that, those agencies. Uh, what was a, a great document to, to reference is the January 2018 document called Aging on Nantucket, uh, Community Needs Assessment. Uh, that actually outlined uh, a, a, a few different things, uh, most notably noting that the island was not very quote unquote age friendly, uh, nor is it uh, walkable uh, parking is an issue and, and accessibility is an issue. Uh, they did note the need for year-round transit, uh, some needs for uh, what they call senior parking spots, uh, and, and spe spe specifically in the downtown area. 
as well as they uh, need to investigate opportunities for more affordable transportation. Um, and in the plan, it noted uh, consideration of rideshare options or a, a volunteer driver programs. And that's just so you know, it's somewhat underway. Uh, uh, we're, we're following some pilot programs that are being done in other communities for rideshare uh, partnerships. Uh, so that could be uh, some potential there in the future. Uh, but based on those do uh, needs documented in the, uh, uh, in the needs assessment uh, in coordination with the stakeholders, uh, we're identifying four needs uh, to, to include in this uh, uh, human services transportation plan. Uh, one being to, again, investigate the needs for more affordable and flexible transportation options and programs uh, for the elderly and disabled. Uh, continued replacement of the uh, demand response vehicles so this, the fleet is modern. Uh, uh, implement accessible sidewalks, and this is a change from the last plan, in the downtown area and uh, also to the bus stops, which is uh, similar for what's in the existing plan. Uh, and the last is uh, also unchanged, continued implementation of uh, bus shelters at fixed routes, bus stops to uh, help with the uh, uh, rider comfort. So, Along with the, uh, the, the regional long-range transportation plan that we'll talk about in a second, uh, these follow parallel uh, implementation schedules. Uh, so that the action that staff would request is to authorize the, um, a 21-day public review period of the uh, uh, comprehensive uh, or the coordinated human services public transportation plan. Um, and then at the uh, June 17th uh, meeting, uh, take any public comment and then take action to uh, to approve. So that would be the action that's necessary to authorize the the 21 day public review period for the uh, 2020 uh, coordinated plan. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for Mike on this? I've never heard senior parking ever. Is that a new term that just popped up, or is this really a real thing that you can we could actually implement something like that? What color do you use on the street? Yeah. Uh, that that was uh, <laughs> the terminology color. used in the elder services, uh, the needs assessment by elder services. Yeah. Uh, taking that recommendation to the Commission on Disability, they interpreted it as accessible parking spaces, say handicapped parking spaces, uh, and quite honestly, just to clarify the uh, uh, for enforcement. I mean, it's you know, probably pretty <laughs> difficult to enforce. To have them all uh, just have it be considered to be accessible parking spaces and, and interpret that to mean expanding the number of accessible parking spaces, specifically in the downtown area. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Um, so one question. Yes, ma'am. When you say investigate other flexible transportation, are you thinking like things, things like on demand, like via or micro mobility and stuff like that? Or what's the what things are you looking at? It's it's the transportation network companies that and the pilot programs that are underway now. Uh, basically, the the user pays a few dollars for for that service. The balance of that cost for the rideshare is uh, covered by the, uh, uh, the the transit authority. And some programs differ. It goes maybe may go up to a certain point, and then uh, you have to pay more. Uh, uh, but uh, we're monitoring that and see if it's successful in these other communities. But yes, it would involve like an Uber, Lyft, whatever, via um, some of these other companies. There's, there's, there's interesting busing things they're doing where they have an algorithm. Now that everything's you know on the in the sky and they can monitor everything, there's interesting things where it'll tell the driver that you know it can be on demand, two people doors, and they can route it properly. So it's very efficient. You know, as the calls come in and the rides come in. These buses go to the right places and drop people to the right places. It's, it's amazing. So, yeah. Yeah. and it's not a lot of duplication. You're not, you know, you're not driving from town to the airport to get one guy to come back and then drive back up to the airport. You're just making a loop all the time. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think the extra step with this is that this would be a subsidized yeah. program. So for the elderly, you have, you have to already be enrolled in the program to take advantage of that. But same principle. I mean, that stuff's going to improve over time. Yeah, I mean, a, it's, it, I've seen, that's the see a difference just this year with Uber. I mean, people are using it for so many different things. Shopping, you know, it's, it's going to get, there's going to be more and more of this. So, um, so you need a, a, a motion to um, put this out for review, Mike? Uh, yes, Mr. Day? Chairman. Okay. So does anyone else have any questions before we, okay. 
Sorry. I'd make a motion to uh, authorize uh, send out the 21 public 21-day uh, public review of the uh, 2020 coordinated human services public transportation plan. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Unanimous. I want to thank you very much. Um, okay, so the next thing, Mike, the plan update um, review. Uh, sure, I believe that started on page 147, uh, and there are a number of items in your packet. The uh, the plan itself is in your supplemental packet. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the slides that I'm going to run through are in the main packet. Uh, I'm happy to navigate between either of them depending on questions. Uh, I was hoping to focus on three items for this discussion, and then at the end. Uh, make the same request that I did for the, the coordinated plan to authorize the 21 day public review period. Uh, so just starting on, on these slides, uh, obviously we had scheduled uh, to release the, uh, the plan for public review at this meeting and then at the June 17th meeting, it would be approved by the NPDC. Uh, at the last meeting, uh, there was a discussion about the survey results and then a, a need to uh, do a little bit more, uh, a deeper dive into the survey results. Um, I can go through very quickly, but I think it's mostly the comments that were received that were uh, in need of uh, some, some some more review. Uh, but just uh, quick on question four, uh, obviously most people who took the survey drove alone, uh, but the second most uh, mode used was just walking. Uh, very economical to just walk. Uh, on question five, which uh, roadway or complete street project was preferred? It was the uh, Four Corners Roundabout and then the Amelia Drive uh, followed by Milestone Rotary and then the Old South Road improvements. Wow. On the uh, multi-use uh, com and complete streets projects, the uh, the in-town uh, bike path was the, quite honestly, I think it was the highest scoring project of all the ones that were asked, oh, excuse me, uh, asked about, um, uh, followed by the uh, widening of the uh, Sparks Avenue sidewalk and then downtown sidewalks in general uh, were, were supported. Uh, with regard to public transportation, a, uh, the, uh, the, the once called uh, ferry connector uh, with direct service from two fairgrounds to uh, downtown was the, the highest supported route, followed by just having a, a, a downtown transit hub or, or intermodal transportation center, um, then followed by more parking rides, obviously. Uh, with respect to uh, parking, um, additional satellite parking spaces or just increasing the overall uh, parking opportunities downtown were, were the two for, for uh, the, the parking facilities. Uh, and then uh, noting that funding was an issue, uh, which, excuse me, noting that funding was an issue, which one of the uh, uh, initiatives was high, highly supported and then, why is this thing, uh, there we go. Uh, it was mostly focusing investments on bike and pedestrian infrastructure uh, if uh, money was uh, an, an issue, followed by roadway projects that uh, improve safety. Uh, now with respect to the, uh, the public comments that were received, I, I, I went through and provided some excerpts on page uh, 156, uh, essentially ranging from uh, that only two people were essentially in charge of making uh, improvements to uh, we need more shade trees. Who are the two, do you think? Uh, Is it you and Matt? Uh, I, well, oh, the three people. I, I would assume the three people would be the majority on the select board or the majority on the planning board. I'm not quite sure. It didn't. <laughs> I, I know you are. I'm trying to have fun with that very scathing comment. Um, I remember reading that. That was, a lot. That was beautiful. Uh, but I thought it would just be fun to share it. Uh, more shade trees. Uh, there was actually, believe it or not, and Paula may not know that this was a comment received, that please do not enhance public transportation. Um, there was another comment that it was a good survey. There's another comment that the stop and shop parking lot needs to be better monitored. And uh, finally, there's general support for the sidewalk improvements downtown and for them to continue. Uh, how these were actually uh, to quantify these results, and I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit better. Uh, just on the vision statement, um, looking at those comments, which there were there were, there were quite a few um, general positive statements. There were a number of those, but as far as just specific issues, uh, vehicle restrictions were either heavily supported or he or vocally supported or vocally opposed. 
um, that was the issue that was probably commented on the most. Uh, and you can see that the split there, obviously the blue is a very positive or strengthen that issue. And the, the orange was a negative or it needs to be clarified and there was issues with the, the program. Um, that was commented on the most, followed by preservation. There's just an overall need that, uh, even in other sections of the survey, you know, just that the island needs to be preserved. It's very important to preserve the island. Uh, and then you can, you can pretty much read the rest, but at the very, very end of the survey, there was uh, a, an, an ask to submit anything else that uh, uh, people had their minds on. Uh, increasing park parking opportunities was, was the one that came out uh, uh, well, parking opportunities were most vocal. Uh, increasing them was, was probably the majority, uh, but the one that uh, was most positive was the increasing bike facilities, which kind of corresponded with the uh, support for like the in-town bike path, uh, both, sides, both of those sections, the Orange and the Washington Street sections. Um, so I thought I'd break that down a little bit for you. Um, I don't know if there's comments on that at all, but... Um, the hate scooters and wayfinders. Yes, uh, there were a number. Whatever that is. Yeah, the the, the comments regarding uh, scooters were just uh, ban mopeds. That's crazy. Um, they get 100 miles to the gallon. Makes no sense. But it was amazing the number of. Uh, they just went on a it's just show. silly. The number of the comments about wayfinding was that people didn't know what wayfinding meant. Oh, a ter the term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, we got. What is it? Is finding your way signage or not necessarily oh, in the form of an actual sign, but like oh, medallions like in sidewalks or oh, that's all that, that is. yeah, the all whole, the ducks, the whole, whole gamut. All these things. I'm just, if I may, no, go ahead, John. Um, just speaking about mopeds and, and things like that. I I just recently tested a uh, an electric bike, and I have to say. Um, it's kind of like a moped, can do 25, 30 miles an hour, uh, has the ability to be, uh, uh, you, you can pedal it, free, freely pedal, pedal it, it'll charge. Environmentally, it's um, yes. pretty good. It lets people be active or as much as they want to be active. I guess the only uh, question mark is how they would um, work well on the bike paths with, you know, um, having a motorized uh, bike, but very similar. But they take them off the. If you don't have the mopeds and you have these, you kind of take them off the roads, so you don't get the the mopeds that are doing 35 or less on a highway, which are a milestone. But you're able to have more traffic, and a lot of people that need the assistant have that extra ability to use the electric motor. I don't know. I think um, just reading about it in a couple of articles in the last two weeks, it's kind of the wave of the future, and I'd like to see how that plays out on Nantucket. I'm in the market. <laughs> yeah. Well, now it's becoming a more popular thing, so just curious, uh, interesting. Yeah. No, it's a, a great point. Uh, and just just for clarification, there is I, I don't believe it's been approved yet, but draft legislation at the state level to classify certain uh, uh, e-bikes. Uh, mostly, the uh, amount of speed that you can gain with with a bicycle is the governing factor. Uh, if it goes less than twenty miles an hour, I believe I'm saying this right. Am I right? Less than twenty miles an hour is a different class. If you're over twenty miles an hour, then you wouldn't be able to use bike paths or these other facilities because you, basically you are like a motorized, like a moped, motor, a motorcycle. Uh, but if it's less than that, 20 miles an hour seems to be the general threshold. The other issue, you can't hear them. They're scary. You get the, the bell on the, uh, the handlebar. Well, oh. I mean, okay, but that doesn't mean it's like an electric car. You can't yeah. hear it coming. and. Yeah. But you, you also know. can't hear a bike. A no, no, bike I know. Doing 25 minutes. That's true. <laughs> That's true. You're right. Yeah. Legislation. <coughs> yeah. You know, he's discussing in there, and it's also, it's not safe much over 12, 15 miles an hour on the bike down. Yeah. yeah. You're doing much more than that, you know, and, and even at 12 miles an hour, it's not safe. So, with the way it's signed and the way it's set up right now. So, it, you know, if they were driving 25, 20, 15 or 20, you, there'd be carnage out there. Yeah. You know, the way it's, the way cars interact with the bike path now, it would, you, we would be. I mean, the crossings. Yeah. Yeah, there's too yeah. many dangerous crossings, too many people don't look. And if you're going that fast on one of these things, you're never going to stop in time. So, you know, so we'd have to make some changes if we were going to encourage those on the paths. 
Does anyone else? I picked up on this one here. Yeah, this is funny. 107. This is a good survey. Ask good questions and makes make men feel heard. What does I that know. mean? <laughs> what year is this? I mean, that's crazy. I, Mike, did you single that out to see if we catch the men bond? Uh, Where's the word people? Okay. Wow. I mean, I like Achi Banka, but I don't know. That's a. Yeah. That's beautiful. Um, <coughs> so, like, I think, you know. I just can't believe that that got printed. But anyway. Um, well, it got typed, so. Crazy. So, Mike, is there anything else? I mean, you know, I think we need more surveys personally, um, for, you know, specifically targeted to certain things, you know, almost an educational survey as well as more than just asking questions, but more of like kind of a, you know, like Andrew said something the other day, it's funny, all these years have <coughs> been trying to get five corners, or four corners, mm -hmm. excuse me, uh, five corners will never be fixed. But anyway, um, alternative to traffic lights was something that I kind of forgot that. I mean, it's sort of a no brainer, but it's you forget that, that that's the reason for all these things. It isn't so much, you know, like them, hate them, whatever. It's mm -hmm. we're not going to have traffic lights here. So you have to have something else if yeah. you're going to do something. That's the only alternative. So. I thought I just kind of think if things were worded in ways where people could like think that way, yeah. make a better, you know, analysis in their mind, you know. Yeah. Um, so anyway, does anyone else have any questions before we move on to? Yeah. You don't need anything for this, right? Oh no, no we do. No, I would like to go into the uh, goals and objectives really quick, if I could, please. Okay. Um, uh, I, I won't touch on all of them, but I just wanted confirmation that the language that I'm including for the goals, the, okay. the objectives for, for one specific goal number, uh, what's the first goal, but in the document it's coded as 3.3 uh, uh, vehicle restrictions. And this is on page 162, because uh, this does lead to uh, later on in the action plan some recommended studies that, that would be programmed into the UPWP. That's why, that's how this kind of process works. Uh, so in order to reduce the number of vehicles, the, the first step is to establish a definitive number of ve uh, definitive limit on number of vehicles transported uh, to the island and how that's done. The measure is uh, provided a recommendation to the select board seeking funds to update the 2001 optimum carrying capacity study. Um, the, uh, the second objective to that is to regulate the number of vehicles uh, on island by instituting a town administered permit. Uh, the, how to do that would, uh, again, be seeking professional services on, uh, for conducting a feasibility study of that. Uh, the third component to that is uh, uh, a limiting of the volume of the vehicles uh, operating um, on the island's roadway, and I believe that was specific language that was approved back in December. Uh, how that's done is providing a recommendation to the select board seeking funds for professional service to conduct a feasibility study for establishing a limit on the number of automobiles that could be legally operated uh, on, on the island's roadways. Uh, the very last component of this is negotiating a binding agreement uh, that guarantees year-round access to and from the mainland by water. Um, it's, it's provided to Nantucket residents, um, and how that's done is basically, again, providing a recommendation to the select board uh, seeking a revision to the Steamship Authority reservation policy uh, to guarantee year-round access for Nantucket residents. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's. This is a, this is like the biggest can of worms to ever even just to try to even discuss all this. Um, you can't keep putting your head in the sand. Uh, my head's Something fully out be. of the sand, well above sand. <laughs> so. It's a reality that has to be looked at and talked about over time. It's. It's when, you, when you tell someone they can't bring a car here, that'll be, that'll be, uh, you know, 
That would be quite a conversation. It's not really telling someone you can't bring a car here. Let's just use a, let me just use yeah. an example okay. not to be boring to everybody. You go to a national park, they say you can have a thousand visitors that day, and another thousand show up after the thousand. It's, they just know that that's how it is. There's only room for that many. So it's not like telling somebody, you can't bring your car. It's saying, this is how many we can fit, and when we hit that number, then I don't know how you go about it, but you, when you're saturated, you're saturated. If we keep going the way we're going, I don't know what will happen in 10 years. That's, okay. Anyways, that's, 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 but you've got right. people this my baby. No, no, I know. No, no, no. I <laughs> and, understand. And I, you know, I think we have to go through the process and and have the discussions. And some things will work, maybe, and some things won't. Won't. And presumably, by having the discussion, we'll end up with the best outcome. That's really all we're trying to do is to talk about it. Is that 2018 versus 2000? Yeah, it is the 18. Yeah. yeah, another typo, Mike. We got a lot of them tonight. Oh, you need to hire a proofreader. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, yeah, we do. We didn't hire him. He just serves. <laughs> Mike, are you asking? us for something with this because I mean I think that what you're thinking uh, I'd like confirmation that this because, is this is appropriate. because this isn't free to start asking all these getting consultants and or whatever you have in mind or is this going to be just an internal MPDC discussion or is it are we really hiring someone to actually talk about stuff like this yeah uh, again, I mean, based on the discussion back in December, it was uh, staff was instructed to bring forward a, a strategy for, yeah. for restricting vehicles, and and I went and reviewed old plans, and this was the language that was included in the older plans. Mm -hmm. uh, the implementation part of this is very dependent on select board uh, uh, dedicating funds. Uh, I'm sure there's other strategies for for funding something like this, but this is what I developed so far. I'm sure it can evolve or change. But I just want to know this is the direction that you all had wanted to go into, um, or, or because it's going to go out for public review. <laughs> um, I just want to make sure this is. Do you want this out for public review? Can I just ask? Like, I mean, there's uh, are these all options? It's like one or you know one one point one 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 point two. It's not all. Like um, we're recommending doing all these things. It's investigate them and see what is feasible and there's support for. Uh, it's really three, four, well, four facets. Uh, first is finding out how many cars are on islands. Seriously, that's the first part of it. The second is uh, uh, figuring out how you could regulate the number of cars if you wanted to regulate. The uh, the third part of it is finding out how many you want to pick to regulate. What is the ceiling? Uh, that's the limited number. And the fourth is actual implementation. I would think that we would need to coordinate with the Steamship Authority. All, all the old planning documents reference that that's really how you would need to meter uh, the vehicles to come back and forth here. Uh, so that's it's getting to uh, a, a way of, of, of uh, tracking, a way of regulating, uh, feeling out what your ceiling is to regulate within the boundaries, and then actually the coordinating with the Steamship Authority for, for molding this into their, their reservation policies. Leslie, go ahead. Do we know how many rental cars there are on the island? I was yeah. just asked the other day. I kept 300 I by statute. It's limited to something limited to 300 by statute. 800, seven something is. It's, it's, uh, is it 700? Seven. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm. Uh, it's 700 by stat. It's 700. There's no enforcement. Uh, it's likely more than that each season, but nobody knows exactly how many. That's what Eric. That's, because one of the reasons I'm asked is I remember 25 years ago having a town meeting that something was brought up that it was going to be 300 rental cars and no more. I remember going to that meeting somewhere in the notes. Yeah. And then you say, okay, so if we have, we didn't have public transportation at that time. Now we have public transportation. We have other alternatives. We have Uber. We have taxi. I don't know why there's so many rental cars. I don't know why there's so many rental cars. But do we know, the though? Beaches. Pardon me? I mean, do we really know, though? I mean, is it really 700? Well, yeah, so I don't know. It, you, it, it can't be more than that. Yeah. Isn't there a medallion? In the summer, process? when they register them in the summer, yeah, they're never at that time. I mean, call uh, no guy. I mean, it's just that's just It'll one you. thing you could look at that's a starting point. Uh, what you do yeah. is you go to the airport and take a look at how many have the stickers on the bumper. If they don't have the stickers on the bumper, then you have to get oh, hold of. Oh, you definitely have the sticker. 
Okay, some of them yeah. don't though, because when I was doing yeah, packing tickets, I used to go to the airport once so? a month. Oh, I guarantee there's so many more than yeah, there's okay. more there. What's than that? Oh, no, no. Some that don't have stickers. Right. right. Yes. I and they they claim that they just hadn't had time to put them on, but you notice all of a sudden those cars aren't parked in that area anymore too. <clears throat> Right, they do. They got a lot over there. And, and the, and the issue I think on this I mean, is, is there's no one, uh, no one solution. You're not going to just say rental car is the issue. We just deal with that and we're fine. Right. You know, Brian came the other day to the select board meeting and said Excise over 500, taxes. Over 500 uh, more cars are registered here uh, year, last year at peak than the year before. Yeah. So we're growing by 500 plus whatever extra off island ones are here at peak in, in one year. And now that isn't as much as the car, you know, as was predicted, but it's still, you know, it's half as much and the directory is up. And we're going to add 300 houses at Richmond and so many here and so many there, all with every house is 2.3 vehicles, give or take. So this issue isn't going away. Uh, when I did this, what, 15 years ago, 18 years 20. ago? 20. We had about 20 years ago, there were about 13,000 cars at the time. And the number that we picked no, 16, uh, right. was 20, 25,000 was gridlock, according to the uh, consultants at the time. They said, when you hit 25,000, you know, some of these areas, Old South Road, Fairgrounds, Milestone, are going to be locked up tight. We're going to have an hour, hour and a half of traffic. And so we were saying, okay, we're going to have, fit, we're going to limit it at 25,000, half of them, some are going to be able to be sold. Some are not going to be, and that's the number. Every new, and at that point, every new house could have gotten one. We had enough at the time for every new house to get one. Every existing person could keep theirs. Some of them would be sellable, so their kids could go to school or whatever. But we, you know, that was the idea that we had in place then. It didn't, uh, you know, it didn't take. It was ahead of its time, and it didn't take. But I think some of the, you know, some of the predictions that the consultants have made have come true. You know, it's taken a little longer, but the backups and some of the issues are serious issues. Have we had 25,000? Yes. 22, 23. Yeah, yeah. And we're close to that we're now. We're close to that now, and I think the backups are what they said they were. We're going to try to, quote, unquote, fix that, but how do you fix something if you keep adding 500 cars a year? Right. You know, it's, it, you, are we ever going to be able to get catch, catch up with it? No so way. anyway, that, so I think we should talk about it. I don't know what the solution is. I think, you know, I think I had the solution 20 years ago, but... It didn't make it through the political process. Grand grandfathering is always the way to go. So that somebody new comes, oh, this is how it is here. It's not like they're getting shut out. They're just, this is how it is on this island and it's before our time. Mike, we, this is going out for public comment. So did you want approval of your mm -hmm. suggestions or what are you looking for? If this conformed to the uh, the the concept that was recommended back in December. I'd, I'd like some direction that this conforms to the, conceptually to what you have, were suggested back in December. I'll make a motion uh, that uh, that uh, the language that staff's put together uh, supports uh, the uh, direction that we were uh, authorized back in December. I'll yeah. second that. Is there a, it, well, yeah, all of discussion? When okay. you may, may have had a good idea. Because if it's if it comes to the select board saying, you know, this study and that study and this study, you know, all of a sudden it looks like a lot more. And maybe if this could be put in, you know, I'm just talking out loud. But if this could be, you know, is it legal and how would you do it? If we had one, if we were looking for one consultant to, to sketch out data the, platform, you know, yeah, to, to sketch it out, I maybe so. you know, the whole thing. that might be a more politically uh, acceptable, palatable mm -hmm. way to, to start it. This isn't gonna. You know, we're not. We're probably, we're not, getting, all we're probably not going to get all three of these things done in the year. Oh, it would have to be a phased approach. Exactly. Yeah. So, I, my, so my suggestion would be to follow something like one of these things and pair this down to, you know, if you put two of these together or pair it down into the initial phases of it. As much as I'd love to see it, and I'm in favor of it. I think. If if in those paragraphs you eliminated just the reference to. Um, so where it says regulate the number of vehicles by instituting a time limit. I uh, know. Uh, measure from uh, provide a recommendation to the select board rather than saying seeking funding for uh, uh, just to, to conduct a feasibility study <coughs> for establishing a vehicle permit. Something wrong. 
I mean, it could be seeking, just skip funding and seeking professional service. I mean, it could be data platform. Yeah. It could be them. I mean, I think it should be because aren't they, and they're getting in that, heading in that direction now, aren't they? Aren't they going to be doing something about cars? Uh, an effective vehicle population, yes, just like effective. Yeah. Nantucket population. Oh. Has Remain done some of this stuff too? That's what we're talking. I mean, that's well, data platform. Who yeah, or is but I'm for feeling it. like some of this work may have been partly done with the parking stuff. Go, I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, go for, ahead, Judith, for any, and then David. For any services that has to be handled by RFP, so that there's uh, open consideration of alternate bidders, I would think so. Um, I don't know whether it would be enough to we simply say, isn't this a 10-year plan? What is the period of this plan? Uh, 20 years, 2020 to 2040. Okay, well, it's, wow. it, to, to say with, yeah. within the, the next 20 years, do the following things, I, I think I'd take out the emphasis on, yeah, I, I understand why you're doing it, because you're basically conveying that you don't have money in the current budget to do it yourselves, and you think it's uh, sophisticated enough that you'd want to have um, somebody else assist with it, but I think that uh, you can follow through on something in a plan like this by proposing funding, can't you? In from one year to the next, as part of the budget process, it, this this report doesn't have to say ask for funding. It can say uh, in a staged fashion proceed with the following four steps or something like that. Yeah. Um, I have the measures out there just to basically identify a task, like, you know, to demonstrate that there's some progress. And the demonstration of progress would be essentially what I would do after this, assuming everything got approved. Draft a memo, bring it to the NPDC. Does this look good? Do these do you request the selectmen do these four bulleted items uh, in order to implement? We currently do not have funding in our professional services budget to do something of the magnitude that's going to be. Uh, that has such a significant cost, so we would need to uh, ask the town to help support this financially. I believe I'm saying this correctly. Am I right, Andrew? Is this the right process? Yes. But, but I'm sorry, before we yeah. really, uh, um, are all the, every item in here, does it all say request money to do it, or are some things being assumed that they're handled without having to put in a financial request? Uh, no, quite got, a few do, actually. Uh, a lot of our uh, safety... Uh, but you've got beta, you've got VHS, you've got VHB, uh, yeah. uh, beta max. Uh, no, you're right, VHB. You know, right, uh, I'm sorry, that just struck me. No, that's uh, hilarious. So, <laughs> I don't know... Uh, Maybe the overview statement is something about seeking funding, but if this is going for comment, I really support that we state collectively take a vote, and I know you want the, the cover and confirmation that we uh, are behind this. I don't know that it really helps to pick just one or two things. If this is a 20-year document, I think it makes sense to be dealing with things over a period of time. Uh, especially if, if they were alternatives, that would be one thing, but I think you explained pretty well that one builds on the next, on the next, on the next. Mm -hmm. I mean, the other, I mean, we have, I know we have a second by Matt, and Mary wants to add a comment, but I just want to just add, I mean, we voted to do this in December. We're not voting to remove it or keep it, it's kept. At the moment, that's this is just we're just. Andrew, uh, Mike's got a laundry list of different things. I mean, you could add another one. You could add the legality side of it. I mean, it's, it's not. I mean, we got pot now. We're going to get rid of cars. I mean, I just don't see this just sailing through. And whether it's 20 years from now, 10 years Nobody's from now. Nobody's saying it's going to sail yeah. through. I mean, but, just but, Leslie, I know, but we we're in this like new freedom movement now. You know, it's like super crazy freedom for one thing and other things. And I think that it's, we have to consult with, you know, town council a little bit as far as this. And we made newspapers all across the country 20 years ago with this idea. So, yes, David. I, I just, um, I think really, I, if we could convince the town at some level to do a fresh new carrying capacity study that that would be a foundation for not only limiting cars if if it's appropriate but so many other issues until we know what we can carry I think and, and everyone can survive here with that you know as far as health 
and, and lifestyle, I think it all really comes down to what, what can we carry? Sustainability. And, and, and if we have that idea as a foundation, then we can base the rest of these moves off of that without really having that many questions. Okay. Mary? Uh, two topics. Thank you. Uh, Mary Longacre. Um, in 1917, the town had been trying oh. for several years to limit cars. The railroad closed and public opinion changed rapidly to having cars on the island as opposed to not having them. And the railroad had been justification for not having them because you could get where you wanted to go with that. So that was a sort of public transportation. But the reason that um, the state kept overturning Nantucket's ban on cars was that there was a state highway on the island and you couldn't restrict access to the state highway because other people's tax dollars had paid for that. Uh, that's my understanding of the situation. So I would add maybe a 3.3.1.0 to check the legality of any measure to try and restrict cars uh, on that basis. Uh, any of the other studies could be money wasted if it's simply not legal. Um, or so you, you might have to investigate yeah. taking the Stone Road locally. Or Can you we buy back? Might use legislature, but take over yeah, the highway. I would just reason. say, you know, the legal aspect should probably come first on that. Yeah. Um, the other topic, it, it's sort of an, an odd one. I'm going to hold myself up as a bad example of, of why um, limiting cars would not necessarily achieve the objective. Um, it, it certainly would probably help in some respects. I'm at an odd point in my life where I actually own four cars. Um, and I'm one driver. It doesn't matter how many cars I own, I can only drive one at a time. Yeah. So limiting the number of cars that I have, although that's something I'm personally trying to achieve, um, is not going to change the congestion on the road. I'm going to drive one car at a time. So. It's just a, you know, to, to keep in mind that this would have limited effect in terms of the positive goal and could potentially have a negative effect uh, on many people for many different reasons. Um, just keeping that in the discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Are we ready to take I a just want to, like, for chuckles, uh, coming from New Jersey 25 years ago, two hours of traffic to work, two hours of traffic back. You know, I just, you know, I, I kind of think this is a little bit funny. I know it's a serious matter, but we haven't stopped the tourists from, the tourists from coming. We sit in traffic. I joked about it last year. 23 minutes from the stop and shop downtown over to Easton Street, and I got over it. I lived through it. I went to work. Why are we so bent on being in traffic for 30 minutes? Is, is it really a lifesaver, I mean, a life-threatening thing? Um, do we have to change all roads? Do we have to make it easier? Do we have to, you know, limit cars coming over? Um, why are we just so fixated on fixing something? We limit cars, we take away, we, we make our steamship so that we can't afford to take our car off island and come back because now there's no traffic, no revenue coming in, and now we're paying $5, $500 a round trip. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, wow. one thing affects the other, and whether it's the infrastructure, we could also look at it like we're doing 20 miles an hour or less, we're doing five miles an hour, we're in traffic. We're not hitting any kids because we're running to, to, get, to make sure that we get to dinner on time. Um, I just think we're, you know, tons and tons of paperwork and studies and money, and what are we really going to gain? 20 years ago, I was, this, I was at the, uh, the, the town meeting with Matt, and he talked about limiting cars. What has really changed in 20 years? An extra five minutes of traffic? I'm ready to give another five minutes of traffic for 20 more years. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Just, a, <laughs> just a, a comment. It's, I mean, I think, we should, I think we should keep the discussion. I think we should talk about excise taxes that Brian brought up the other night. As well as the number mat, I and mean, he brought up you know, we, you know the excise taxes from cars. Just for everyone's understanding, it goes into the general fund. It's significant, and there's a lot of vehicles registered that just sit in garages. You know, there's a parking business on Nantucket. Winter parking, mm -hmm. it's absolutely amazing. But we're changing our it's, culture. We're changing. Yeah. We're getting 
uh, now we're having, uh, you know, chauffeur driven cars because they don't want to own a car and somebody picks up and now you have um, valet parking and we're taking away parking places from local uh, people that work here and we're, we're sponsoring businesses. Uh, you know, you go to Sanibel, you expect to be, there's one road going in. You expect to be in traffic for an hour. It's just... But people still go there. It's a beautiful place. Yeah. No one's going to stop coming to Nantucket well, because you're going to be in traffic for 23 minutes. Uh-oh, that's it. Cancel the plans. We're going to Jersey Shore. They're the key, still coming here. The key word you said was congestion. Mm -hmm. And I say that when, and I agree with you, I'm not that frazzled by the traffic. It doesn't bother me, but I'm looking at the overall, I'm not, Matt. Okay. But I'm looking at the overall congestion. As you keep adding to the roads, what happens when there is a safety issue and the fire trucks are trying to get around and you have gridlock? Got to say. It's a safety issue. Mm -hmm. If you have gridlock and you have a snake that runs for six or eight or ten miles, well, how do you get around it? We keep voting for traffic at the ballot box, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Wendy. I, I have one like consideration or cautionary thing, um, which is if, if it ever comes to a point where there are like medallions or something that you get to buy, like what has changed in 20 years is this economic disparity and the rich can have whatever they want. And if, it, if we're creating a system of limits, I really worry. No, that's, you know, that's Mar would that, that would be hard. number three on Mary's list if she had a three right there. Is it's, that the economic thing? I mean, today in this t the climate that we have now, I mean, you cannot deny someone anything at this point. Just I mean, you just can't. It. Someone will pay it. Someone well. will pay it, and it won't be. But well. I think once we limit it, we open up the doors for loopholes. And if we give medallions, we give registered cars here. You know, people that have the registered cars are going to take advantage of it. Next thing you know, they're going to be selling them for a quadruple of what, what they have because they're here. You open the, yeah. you know, the, the, and it's not the rich that are going to take advantage of it. It's yeah. just anybody's going to take advantage of the loophole. They're here, they have it, and they can use it, and they can profit from it. Um, free market tends to kind of balance it out, and yeah, the negative is we have a little bit more traffic. All right, so yeah. back to, yeah. yes, yeah. Uh, just to Mary's comment, um, it definitely would take state legislation uh, to limit uh, cars on the island, uh, so we, we would certainly have to go to the legislature. The town did that uh, a number of years ago, actually, to limit trucks and the size of trucks. I don't know whatever happened from up from it, but it was just an example that to be able to do that, they were able to get that authority, but they had to go to the legislature. So that's that's a given. This isn't something that's going would happen quickly. And there were a lot of considerations. Um, this, the second issue you raised about uh, having four cars and only being able to drive one, one, the medallion type system uh, I think can eliminate both your concern and your concern. It isn't necessarily limiting cars, it's limiting how many cars can be driven at one time. And uh, so I wouldn't necessarily foresee something that says you can't have four cars, it just says you can't have all four cars out driving around Nantucket at the same time. And second of all, uh, on your comment, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think this would be something that people buy and sell. Uh, this would be something that there is some allocation system, and that's it. And it, it raises an enforcement issue, but it wouldn't be something where the rich can buy them and the poor can't. I, I wouldn't see that. But I think tonight isn't the time to be yeah. to, to be debating all no, of this. No, that's right. There's a million questions. Huh. Yeah. We're, I'm sure we're going to get, uh, given what we already saw, uh, we're probably going to get a lot of comments uh, when it goes out to public hearing. And maybe, um, and my comment was that simply, I, I, I think we, we voted to put it out there and to consider it, and I think we should. And uh, if uh, my motion was simply whether Mike needed uh, our well, authorization. Uh, approval to put in this. And uh, so that was my and, motion. And, and, yeah. If we want to limit it by getting rid of the funding language or the consulting yeah, uh, language. Yeah, that was what That's I was fine, just going to actually say. That was, that was really the sole This doesn't it. authorize you to spend money. This is more about the survey and the 21-day. 
Craig, uh, I mean, yeah. this is probably we're yeah. more than likely going to need professional that's, services, that's and we just question. don't have I'm the budget just make, for making sure because we yeah. said a lot here. So, okay. So Matt's motion, was, uh, I mean uh, Fritz's motion, was seconded by Matt. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Yeah, Miss Eleanor. Thank you. Sorry for the <coughs> continued discussion, but it's a good one. Um, Just getting on to uh, project evaluation, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, 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 I think the comment was also made about pri project prioritization. I think uh, Fritz has a, a pretty good handle on how we, we, we sort out and, and, and rank projects and score them and whatnot. Uh, I did include on page uh, 163 uh, uh, the matrix of what we use for, for scoring based on three uh, four criteria condition mobility safety and sustainability okay uh, number of different factors and uh, probably a couple of dozen measures that we, we use that are valued at one point apiece and that's how a project gains points or, or loses points um, based on that input uh, on uh, page 164 there's the listing of of uh, all the projects ranked simply by the planning score of what they did score and uh, at, at the very top of the uh, the old south road improvements uh, those scored the highest because there really wasn't a lot of sustainability impacts like right away or environmental uh, but what it did do was accommodate a lot of different modes uh, and provide a lot of different facilities along documented uh, safety areas um, that's why they scored as, as high as they did um, these aren't sorted by status um, and based on some corrections I need to make, it's probably good that I didn't do it that way. Uh, but you can see just based on pure score that essentially bike pedestrian facilities or complete streets projects uh, really did float to the top. It really did to address more than just a uh, um, than one mode uh, like a, a simple intersection uh, improvement would do. Um, there, there are is a map of uh, the the improvements, and those are generally uh, conform with the town overlay district. That's where we should have a lot of our transportation investments uh, located. Um, on page one sixty seven, this is the, uh, the the budget, and this is going to need a little bit of explaining. And and um, hopefully, Derek's still on the line and can confirm that this is an appropriate way to manage the uh, uh, the project schedule. Um, I didn't list projects in this in this uh, financial uh, table. Uh, what are what are listed are programs, uh, and basically split them a third, a third, a third of our uh, what we can anticipate getting as a federal target amongst intersection improvements, uh, complete streets projects, and then bike pedestrian improvements. And I'm I'm sure that's that split will fluctuate uh, year to year, uh, but just for demonstrating a fiscal constraint in this plan. Uh, and because a lot of our projects are go far beyond uh, what we can anticipate as a federal target, we depend heavily on discretionary, yeah. not necessarily by right target. Uh, this is the only way we could really demonstrate uh, fiscal constraint in the plan by using programs rather than projects. And, and this is a, a tactic that's used in, in, in the other regions as well uh, for, for managing their action plan. Okay. Does anyone have any? Questions for Mike. Um, so, so that would be essentially the capital plan for the using federal funds. Uh, on page one seventy one, again, are the uh, the recommended studies for for going forward. Uh, this committee has in the past uh, uh, voiced the need for a, a travel demand forecast model. That's included in the in the plan. Uh, you just con confirmed the uh, the carrying capacity study update. Um, also, what also needs to be updated just for diligence, uh, some plans are getting a little stale, so they need to be updated with new data. Um, a downtown circulation study and then a mid-island uh, circulation study, which uh, um, are, are different from a modeling task, so they're called out and specified as their own uh, study. But that'll help inform any type of modeling that, that gets done. Um, and again, uh, the action that's requested at this meeting is a uh, uh, authorization to conduct a 21-day public review, and at the uh, next meeting on June 17th, the uh, the commission will be asked to uh, to approve the uh, the plan. Uh, again, a, a copy of the plans in your packet um, to avoid <laughs> printing that thing out again. Uh, if you could keep the uh, your plan and just mark up uh, any changes, or just email me changes, or we can just talk about them at the next meeting. Uh, but we just want to avoid uh, printing too much paper. 
Uh, so if you could keep your supplemental packet and just uh, refer to the, the document that's in there for, for reviewing. Um, there's also a digital copy that's online if you prefer that method of, of reading. Um, but again, staff recommends the, uh, or, or seeks authorization to conduct the other 21-day public review. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Fritz seconded. Oh, no. Just before Bert did. I caught that like a horse race. <laughs> um, so all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Mike, are you good now? Are we done with you right this minute? Uh, we, we did this before 8 o'clock, so I'm fantastic. No, I'm just... <laughs> That <laughs> we're, we're staying, we're, we're still on this. Um, the regular uh, packet, right, Eleanor? This this next yeah. item is in the regular. It yes. Is. Okay. And Mr. Chairman, if I could ask if the uh, if Derek is still on the line. Yes, uh, Derek, you still there? Yeah. He is I like. Hello. Yeah, I. I I, I believe we've, we've covered all the topics that Sorry, he may want to listen in on. I just want to make him aware that we're not going to be talking about any 3C related oh, issues. Oh, is it? Does he want to? He, he's more he than welcome leave, to sit in. Can, I don't mean I, to say I, leave, I, but I, I think we're all set with uh, the 3C work, uh, so I okay. am going to depart. But thank you for having me, and I'll touch base with you this week, Mike. Just, just so you thank know, you we're not not here. We're fine. This is us. No, this no, is the no, way we are. Great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. Enjoy the rest of your Take meeting. care, Derek. See ya. That's good, Mike. Thank you for telling us. I didn't know that he. I you keep look looking for me, down look and it keeps saying he's still there. I'm like, man, this poor guy. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Um, the vineyard wind issue, um, Lauren. Do you want to um, talk us through this? That'll be great. Good evening to the board, Lauren Sinatra, oh, Energy Coordinator for the Town of Nantucket. Um, currently, the Vineyard Wind project is going through the federal permitting process. Um, the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management is the lead federal agency um, undertaking this review. And we're currently under the Section 106 consultation, which is when a federal undertaking may impact a, um, a historic property. Um, and in Nantucket's case, it's the nas uh, National Historic Landmark. So it's a very complicated review, and to assist the town, we earlier in May uh, decided to hire uh, specialized expert counsel. Um, earlier this month, the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management made a finding of adverse effect upon the Nantucket National yeah. Historic Landmark. So expert counsel did help us to prepare the letter in your packets this evening. And the NP and EDC is a consulting party to the consultation, represented by Ms. Hallie Backus, who couldn't be here this evening. So I offered to step in and to answer any questions. But essentially, we are seeking um, endorsement of the town's comments that you'll find in your packets to, um, that, that are broad ranging. But essentially, we are concerned with the review to date. Um, it's been expedited. Uh, steps have been taken out of uh, sequence, skipped altogether. So we are in support of a responsible project, but um, we do have concerns to date, which are highlighted in the letter. So we are seeking NPNEDC's letter of support for the town's comments um, as prepared by expert counsel. Okay, Andrew. Mr. Chairman, I, just to add to that, I mean, I, I support exactly what Lauren has recommended here. Um, there's another little bit of overlap, which is our participation in the ocean planning process, which is now um, in its third updating uh, period here. And so this letter was made aware to that group as well. And um, I think it really strengthens the position of the town and the region for us to weigh in. Anyone? Motion to is anyone? Yeah. Is anyone else? I just want to make sure everyone's okay. With this, so Lauren, we appreciate all your work and Holly's too. So, is there a motion of support? I'll make a motion to, second. to support her recommendation. Is there a, all those in? Wendy seconded. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So, Bert and Wendy. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, Lauren. I know Thank it's. Thank you, everybody. No, it's 
Interesting. I know a lot of time has gone into this short speech, but I, I understand this is a lot of work for you dealing with all this. So we're on the right track, but I appreciate your support. Thank yep. You. Thank you. All right. <coughs> when did the ocean when did the ocean plan go in? 08? I think it was 08, if I recall. And we knew this was coming, all this. One update in 14, and now this is the next. Whether there'll be an update in 19. Or yeah. Not. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll wait for Judith. Um, let's see. Does that, you want to, you guys all want to take a break? I mean, I don't know. This is a lot. I mean, it's been going on and on. There's a lot of stuff. This is one of the reasons that, you know. The recognition of the of our group out here in Nantucket solely is important. Yep. This is one of those things. Even though it's not, you know, front page news every minute, it's important because of the state. At the state level, we're important. So. Uh, she has got, just she has got their attention, and we have got their yeah. attention. Yeah. 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 There's just some concern that. So we feel we're going miles well. In some ways, we feel as though we were, you know, we, our interests were not really represented yeah. in the process. And you know, hiring hiring special counsel has you know has sort of shaken you know venue went up a little bit, and we're you know sort of asserting asserting ourselves now so that the process is done properly. It's taken a lot of work, and she's done a good job at it. So, and it doesn't mean that we're against. Alternative energy, it doesn't mean we're going to skate wind or anything else. It's we're for the induction. It's kind of how we have to think about it. Has it, has it caused them to slow down any of their developmental process? I, we, it's too early. I would say yeah. it's too early to tell, but it's, it's certainly a cause of concern. They have plans, and the state has plans, and you know, our representatives have, in, have come down to the island and said, yeah. Yeah, this is important to the state. Well, okay, great. That's why you, know, you, should, you have to do it properly. Because if you don't, it will take you'll be tied up forever. So yeah. it, it's kind of, it's 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 tricky. Okay. Oh. Um so the next item is for discussion only for us. Um anyone have any comments on the staffing Novak consultant staffing study and the, the revised one? I mean, we all know, we've all read it, we've all know where we're at right now. We were at the meeting the other night, um, the select board. Um, so if anyone has any questions, there's going to be, um, I think that one of the good things that came out of, uh, of this was the coordinator review improvement, which I can cite several recent um, issues with some coordinator review that didn't maybe work out exactly the way it should have um, on a couple of projects and uh, the joint meeting um, potential, Andrew. Yep, go ahead. Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, I think, you know, the commission should be aware that there's two NOVAC studies. There's the first one, which is the right. termite staffing study, and that's um, a project that has implications to the plus office that's being implemented that came out in December of 18, um, and that's underway. Um, this uh, current report, um, the timing on that, at least when that was uh, being reviewed in the fall, and I think you heard this during the presentation yeah. that um, there have been numerous changes since that time, and that reflects maybe that particular period. Yeah. But um, there's many things that have actually advanced beyond that that the report doesn't, in fact, capture fully. Yep. Um, the town manager and I have not had a chance to go over um, you know, the full implementation of all the management uh, items. There's several in there that um, I don't, that we're going to have to work out. Um, some that are, I think, unrealistic. Um, uh, the review process, for example, that talks about this rigid application where you go to one board and then the other. That's, yeah. Yeah, that that's was really not. That's not uh, possible. Um, 
<laughs> so again, I don't know. I, I, I'd like to hear if there's uh, if people have read it and have thoughts they want to share. I'd like to hear those. Um, at some point, I think we you know can follow up on this with the board. Hey, open it up for anyone's comments. Judith. Uh, I attended the select board meeting too, and I know several others of you did. Uh, my sense from the discussion there was that there might be a, a future plan that there would be joint meetings to discuss some areas of interest. So I just want to confirm if that's what everybody else took away from this yeah, too. I, yeah. Uh, in addition to the more technical things that, uh, such as what order to go to with which boards and things of that sort, um, I would say the things that struck me as particularly important here, the first one is the memorandum of um, agreement, and I was struck by changes between the initial draft that we received in February or early March, which I brought with me, and the way that recommendation is uh, laid out in the newest version that was presented to the select board. Uh, my Personally, I think that's an issue that we really should be talking about is the reporting lines and the status of that memorandum of understanding. I don't know what others would say to that point, but I think that uh, this is quite an unusual system to not have uh, really the basic governance functions all by, uh, primarily reporting to the town manager. I appreciate that the manager did do a review on Andrew this time around, but it just seems to me there's a real risk when you don't have um, clear understandings about that than the memorandum of understanding uh, provides. I also have to say I don't think that this board in my year on this board really does a lot of supervision. Um, I have said that to Andrew in the past as well. It, it seems to me that uh, just trying to fill out those review forms and things like that, um, we're not there to see day-to-day -day actions. Uh, we don't really either have uh, a practice in this board to be saying what are the collective goals of the commission for the year to come and I think things like that we can't have it both ways we can't both uh, say that we're supposed to be uh, a guiding force on this and at the same time not really set forth some kind of uh, goals that would be I would think coordinated with the manager and the select board we're doing that kind of de facto for certain things like affordable housing and uh, other other matters uh, here, but I really think there's need for more significant discussion. And from what I could sense from the select board, I couldn't really tell if they have an interest in doing that. Uh, I don't know that Andrew probably would want that or, or not want that, but I would just say that because there's been some change from the earlier version to the current version uh, that seems to be suggesting more to keep the MOU and to quote live into it, whatever that may mean. Um, I'm I'm finding myself confused about what the ultimate message is here, and I think we really need to delve into it more. Go ahead, Andrew. Well, I, I guess I, I don't want to mix everything all up into one thing. I think that the agreement. Between the town signed in between the town and the selectmen, I mean, I'm sorry, the town and the NPDC was very clear in 2012, and I think it should be updated. It should be reviewed. It certainly could come before you at the June meeting, which is our annual meeting when we do this. In terms of um, setting goals, and you know, this is a discussion. You know, the commission decided at some point to get away from that because they were you were doing an annual review. Um, and I'm happy with a with a formal review and formal goals that are that are set out, provided we have a discussion about it. Um, I you know I don't think the commission is in a position to just hand down goals and say go do it. This should be um, a two way street between us. That's clearly been the intention of the contract between us, and it's clearly the intention of the agreement signed between the NPDC and the town. Um, I don't think that, um, I'm, I think Judith and I had a conversation, um, 
we don't need to necessarily keep the plus agreement um, before we were completely separate from the town. The Planning Commission did its thing and the town basically through tradition, you know, we assumed all kinds of additional duties. That was formalized in the 2012 agreement. So before that, there wasn't, there wasn't the plus agreement. And if there's a desire to have a municipal planning office, that's exactly what you should, should pursue. Um, we did it the way that we did it because we're different from the other agencies. We combined it for efficiency. It made sense to put it under one particular purview. So there's other options besides that. Um, certainly, we, again, I think we should review it at some point. But um, in terms of the confusion, I'm not sure that it's all that confusing. Regional planning agencies enter into contracts with their towns for services. And that's exactly what was asked of us. Mm -hmm. That's what the board in 2012 did. And again, you know, we can go back to something else or refine what we have. There's there's many four different buildings. There's many different topics besides what was laid out in that report. Um, so yeah, I would say that I don't think the, the solution is. I think I think that the you know, sort of reviewing it and trying to improve is something that we should be doing regularly. I think I'm happy to see the, you know, Andrew's uh, review and the various comments, and I think that was a fair review, and I think that's a step in the right direction. And I think if you do that properly, it's what you're asking for, Andrew. It's a give and take, and it's a discussion of okay, here's my strengths, here's my weaknesses, here's the things we need to backfill, here's what we need, here's what I need to do my job better, you know, and that's the, I think that's the tenor that it should be, and that's how this should be ended into. Uh, I'm not sure if the select board, you know, I'm not sure if, you know, the, you know, the other day it was probably, you know, I'm not sure that it would, you know, what would have happened at, at that meeting. Jason was missing. I don't know where their head is on it, but I think discussion on some topics are very important. I think there are issues that are bubbling up now where there is a disconnect and there's, you know, thing, sort of things like Richmond and certain things get ahead of us and then the select board is handed something and there's not the information to, you know, to, you know, to figure it out and we're playing catch up. And so there has to be a better connection, you know, between the planning arm of the town and the, you know, the sort of the management, how you're gonna pay for it arm of the town. And I don't know how we get there. So I think those discussions uh, going forward are really important to improve it. Uh, and I think, you know, sort of the days of our tax rate is low, we can do whatever we want, our, you know, are over. There's gentrification in a lot of the different in a lot of different neighborhoods. The, the residents are not going to be able to afford what's coming their their way, and so we have to do this efficiently, and we have to do it smart, and we can't continue to subsidize some of the things we've subsidized. And so I think for a lot of different reasons, we need to sort of work on this and, and improve it. So you know, I'd be willing to look at the MOU. I'd be willing to have joint meetings. I can't speak for four other members. But I think it's really important to improve how we're doing and what we're doing. Jack, go ahead. Yeah. The Planning Commission, at least back when we first got it started anyway, comes under a state uh, thing whereby uh, in order to get certain state grants and like that, you've got to have a Planning Commission. A few years ago, the Board of Selectmen wanted to set up its own commission and get rid of this Planning Commission. And uh, at that time, Hope my we, father had, we wasn't had to go out and them. show them at that time that <laughs> a lot of these grants just aren't available to us unless we have this type of commission. It can't be just something over under the board and the board runs it. Um, anyone else have anything? Um, I have all kinds of things, but you know, Matt just mentioned the flow taxes and we can afford anything. You know, it's funny, Cinder says we can. We tried to pass the district improvement financing uh, for Richmond, and we got, you know, that was actually, I sponsored that article and came racing back to the meeting because I was away. And, uh, you know, out of, out of the recommendation from Bond Council, we didn't support it, you know, we let it go, basically. But that conversation 
has come back. And Matt talks about what Matt, when Matt brings up who's paying for what, that he's talking about developments mm -hmm. not paying their fair share, whatever right. that is, okay? We hear that term floating around with political mm -hmm. issues all the time. The diff, and I'm using this as an example to explain this, would have required Richmond's new tax base to pay for a percentage of whatever we decided it was going to pay for. We didn't get support from finance department. We didn't get a for support from Cinder. She's the bond council lady that gives us all these recommendations. Because they see us, Matt, like you're saying, you know, they see us as, oh my God, Nantucket doesn't have any problems with money. What are you bothering with DIP for? Same thing that you guys all saw when that lady from Franklin County came to this room and the finance part of her PowerPoint, we sort of skipped it. <laughs> we did. I mean, we like that was the least concerned issue and it was the financing things. And she said that's the biggest issue everywhere else except here. And I thought that was really eye opening. Um, as far as the Oper the uh, back to now I'm going to get back to the agreement. That agreement was signed in August of 2012, and there were three things that just were the last straw: Point Breeze, the little approval down at the movie theater on North on on North Water Street, and the pizza parlor. Tom that was. Those three things were the last straw <laughs> of having all these departments with their own fiefdom offices. And what Andrew and Leslie have been set out to, to do to sort of get the HDC staff, the buildings department staff, all the other inspections that go on with plumbing and electrical and all that into one building with plenty of parking and cross-trained in, in the way the staff operates now and it's taken it's taken seven years to fix. This is not this is like uh, you know huge operation to fix this. Yeah. We've gone through a you know cycle of I don't want to say a downturn because we had the downturn before this, but it's ticked up since oh t since 2012, and um, and we're just about fixed. I mean, it's working. I mean. I mean, look, I've been on the steamship board since 2004, and it's, you can't just go down to the steam, I can't go down to that dock and say, oh, all the employees need to stop parking out of the public spaces, because they do. They park in, like, places they shouldn't be parked, like mm -hmm. Matt talks about businesses park in front of the store. Well, that's what happens down there. That has to go to somebody else to do that. I made one mistake, and all the time I've been on the board saying the wrong thing to somebody. I had, had to have a letter written in my behalf to the state. It was a big deal. I said something. I didn't swear at a guy, but I said something I shouldn't have said, even though I was right, but you can't say it. It isn't 1972. There is nobody from this board should be going out to the planning office, like running the ship like it's uh, you know, a business and you got three guys coming to work and you start telling everybody where to go. I mean, that's not how it works. I mean, when I personally go out there, I feel like I try to be as quiet and as discreet as possible when I go out there um, to sign something or talk to somebody about something or whatever I'm doing, which I'm not there that much. I think the, and I want to bring up something else, the professional services, I call that the Athenaeum Mid-Island. Okay, for the town. It's like an Athenaeum for the town. I mean, you go out there, people are getting information. It's sort of like going to the town building, whether you're going to the town clerk's office to get something. It's, there's, they're friendly. The, the attorneys that have to get things for clients get all the, you know, they're sitting at the table, the same people usually there. It's the way it works. I mean, if they had to go downtown for one thing and over here for the next thing and then another place. I mean, it would be complicated. I mean, people would be complaining in these surveys. 
Is it perfect? No, it looks better with the white paint, uh, but it's still the old steel building from the electric company when they sold stoves and refrigerators. I mean, it's the, it's the same building. It's just what they have. And, and that's another issue. Um, town isn't spending any money out there. We're spending 46 minutes at the school. We're building a new uh, marine department building, which I still don't understand how that's going to just happen by magic on, on Washington Street, but it's approved. I mean, with, we, we have a new police station. We have a new fire station. That building is still Vic Reed when they fixed appliances. I mean, that's the same place. Um, the other thing is um, the, I like to call it the conspiracy. And I'm going to bring this up, and I don't really like to do this, but, you know, we've had, there's been this sort of thing about Andrew whatever that thing is, this distrust or some kind of stuff that goes back to the past. And I've sat on this board since 2004 in various levels and was off for one year and back on after. And um, we had different members refusing to do his review, abstaining, and, and I give Matt a lot of credit because Matt knows exactly what I'm talking about. He's not going to. I'm not going to say anything, but hopefully, but he knows what I'm talking about. He knows who I'm talking about. I think we're, we need to get past that. I mean, Andrew, to me, is the best thing that's happened to Nantucket since Walter Beinecke. I don't know what else to say. He doesn't get enough credit for the good stuff. It took, it took 125 years to somebody to come up with a way to get rid of the paper roads that were created in the 1880s. It did took 125 years for somebody to say, what are we doing with all these roads that are untaxed and can be opened up by an abutter and, and make everybody angry? Well, that's, I think we've got an idea. And what made the one big beach so popular was the idea of having permanent easements. And a lot of that has happened because of the Paper Street plan, you know, the, uh, the ad sale program. So personally, you know, I just see a business at this at two fairgrounds. I see it like the steamship. If you have a problem with management, we had some problems with steamship management, if I can tell you that. And stuff was done about it when there was a problem. But when there isn't a problem, it's better to work with people than it is to try to find a problem, in my opinion. So that's where I stand. And I needed to get that out because it's been driving me crazy for the last month and a half. So, Bert. Are we going to uh, try to work with the, the Board of Selectmen to improve the uh, memorandum of understanding? I think that that's, yes. I mean, I got that a feeling the other night. Um, I think that that's something we should be doing anyway. Yeah. I mean, I mean don't you, didn't you get that feeling, Judith? They I mean, said it, they would talk. I wasn't well, sure it was. They would talk about I know it was it. not that long of a yeah. meeting, and and Jason wasn't there. And I'm not sure either. It, I no, I think the lead is going to come from here. We tried this joint meeting thing before, and we just you guys just had a joint meeting with finance the other day, and I think we should have occasional joint meetings. We have to figure out what the discussion is going to be because there are lots of different things that we could. I, I mean, I've always been in favor of having a. Planning and uh, planning and uh, select board meetings two or three a year. We you know to meet jointly like a workshop, right. which is what we had. We used to we had a couple upstairs. And we had workshop meetings and um, we do it with capital and and selectmen and 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 finance committee one time per year cycle. Um, but there are a lot of issues. I mean everything's about growth now. I mean we we're not there's no need to beat around the bush, water, you hear all these different, every so often something comes up that's a big deal. I mean, Richmond, you, people are forgetting with the Richmond issue that if we didn't get that vote in November 9th, 2015 to get the workforce housing bylaw passed, we would be dealing with a whole different animal out there. Because in April, their original plan was shot down 
the town meeting, which was way less than what we see now, by one, there was one very vocal opponent, but got enough voters to vote down. So we don't, you don't even hear about that now, but that's exactly how it happened. So Richmond's not perfect, but at least it's ours. At least we have special permits tied to everything, which in a 40B scenario, we don't have that. So anyway, um, so I am personally, I'm sorry that I went off a little bit on this, but Andrew, you know, I'm not hanging out with Andrew. I don't even go out for a drink with Andrew. But I, I believe in people that work hard and do a good job and leaving them alone and letting them work for the most part. That's my feeling about things. So does anyone else have anything? Yeah. Over here. Yes, Wendy, sorry. Um, I wasn't able to be at the selectmen, so I mean, select board meeting, so I wasn't going to pipe out. But I, I do feel like there might be context that, you know, Matt kind of brings up to me. Um, we're talking a lot about stuff that I was on the sustainable Nantucket board back in the day that, you yeah. know, Matt founded. And it was a lot of very much about smart growth stuff before it was cool. And, Fancy. you know, like it was this really divisive time. It that was. Matt's talking about. Yep. And I was on the far left side of all that and very much so and you know and I, I didn't know anybody kind of on the town side then and it was a lot about like oh my god they'll never work with you you know like Finn Murphy was yep. a great guy like super smart pretty divisive um didn't always Christine Silverstein Christine it was everybody so um th that was like a, a similar thing that maybe you know when people come and they care so much well, actually, it goes even back farther to the comprehensive plan. And I was ready to, like, burn down the houses that were being built, you know, by the farm. I was like, that's <laughs> horrible. It wasn't like that last year. <laughs> and last then the year. comprehensive plan, the lawyers were like, people have rights, and it's their property. And I was like, oh. So it was a learning curve here. Anyway, but, um, but like, on the independent bookselling side, um, it, it was all, I started working with Andrew on the, on the chain store bylaws. And the sustainable folks, you know, toppy you know they were like you know the town will never ever go for this and i was like well let's try it and i was super naive brought it to town meeting completely unvetted completely nothing reviewed and to my surprise it was like well here we're going to help you work with this and let's table it for next year and i was like really you know and so we worked together at great length totally crafted something there was no dog in the race either side or pony or whatever they say um it was very much like if that's what the town wants to have happen Let's craft it legally, and then we'll bring it to a vote. And it was fantastic. Like, I loved it. I got hooked on planning, um, all because of the help from the office. And Leslie, too, and Andrew have just always helped, you know, whatever things we've, you know, develop a business over the years now. It's been a lot of different things, and they're just very fair. And they can't s take a side <coughs> one way or another um, and really helped limit. Uh, another great example was my neighborhood in Pine Valley. Uh, R10 Johnny Limited. Said it was RC2. R10 Limited. And, you know, and they worked very hard to make sure that that was protected. And yep. um, so I, 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 we are talking like a lot of history. And oh, to my, my last little point, I wanted, sorry to go on about that too, but um, I think on boards, on all the different boards I've been on, like as president of the chamber or whatever, corporate boards, nonprofit boards, it's very much the role of the board to step back and let the staff kind of go, you know, we give guidance. There's yes. no way we should be like looking over their yep. shoulder day to day. Um, and I'm on a lot of boards and there have been. So I, I just I just don't see that our oversight more than we have would be appropriate. I do think the joint meeting thing is awesome. Like definitely more communication. Is there room for improvement? Always, you know. So that would be a good a good step in the right direction. But I just wanted to pipe in since you started me on that spot. <laughs> Matt, thank you. I forgot about some of that stuff. Oh boy. <laughs> yes, go ahead, Fritz. Um, just a couple of comments. Um, <clears throat> after reading uh, the uh, staff review um, study, um, First of all, I, th I think any department, any any organization, whether it's corporate or whatever, there is oversight by somebody to some degree. Uh, I and but I completely agree that we're we're and and whether that oversight is a select board, whether it's this board, I I don't know, but it, there has to be oversight by somebody. Um, that doesn't mean that we run, we, we should be, or whatever, whoever has that oversight should be trying to run that apartment. That's Andrew's job. But uh, it's the oversight 
committee, whatever that is, job to make sure that that job is being done. And uh, um, so it has to, there has to be some oversight by someone, and I don't know where we're going uh, on this, but hopefully uh, with joint meetings we'll get to wherever that may be, and I know there are lots of views uh, about how that ought to be organized. Um, second of all, um, I, I think there have to be goals established every year uh, in the corporate world. Uh, I was a lawyer for 30 years. Every year I had to sit down and I had to tell a managing partner what I was going to do, what my goals were for the year. And every year, at the end of the year, they sat down and I had to, I had to go through the process of explaining what I did and what I didn't. And also here, somebody else say what they thought I did and what I didn't do. So I think that's a part of the natural management process. And, uh, and, and, but I don't think those are things, those goals are not something that we dictate to Andrew. Those are goals that I think we should be sitting down either um, publicly in, in, as the whole group or in private with a smaller group to work with Andrew to at least come up with what he believes uh, should be the goals, his goals or the goals of the department for a particular year. And if we disagree with that, then we ought to vocalize the fact that we disagree and ask him to think about something else and then come back with a set of goals that were agreed upon or whatever. And then at the end of the year, part of the review process yep. is, did we, did we accomplish those goals? Did we not accomplish those goals? If we didn't, why? And were we too ambitious? And we all learn from that. I mean, that, that's just basically good corporate management. Um, and um, so I, I'm hoping that, uh, I'm not sure where we're going here. I don't know whether we as a group, independently of the select board, want to spend some time really looking at what the recommendations are and then have a discussion, mm -hmm. again, publicly or privately with a smaller group, with Andrew to find out, you know, so that everybody understands where they're coming from and, uh, and we can decide how we're going to do that. And finally, I just say I agree with that, that we need a new building. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't, I don't think that building works for anybody. We can't, uh, we can't figure out what we're doing with twenty south water. <laughs> Still, a lot of money and electricity over there. But that's he, good. That's true. Waste. Yes, waste. David. No, I mean, I, Fritz had a lot of great comments. I mean, it, it's there needs to be oversight. There needs to be accountability. It's, and I think. It, when we look at the memorandum of understanding, it's about figuring out with Andrew, with everyone, what what's going to serve the town the best, and and going forward, what is going to be the um, the easiest way to set those goals and the easiest way to oversight the department and Andrew, um, but that's all done together. It, I don't think in any way should we be saying, well, it's going to be like this. I mm -hmm. mean, we, we work together to create those goals, and then we support him in reaching those goals, and then we all sit around the table at the end and, and, and see where we got. But it's, it's, about, it's about kind of locking down. I, I feel there's a lot of vagueness right now in, in the memorandum of understanding and the oversight of planning in general. Um, and it's not about anyone doing anything bad. It's just about it's the proper way to govern and to manage. One of the things that I didn't mention is that's a huge issue that was in the mentioned numerous times in the report is Andrew's relationship with Libby. And that's something that I understand really well. And unfortunately, I guess when you already have a good relationship, you don't think that you have to tell everybody about it or report something like, you know, hey, we communicated 27 times today or something like that. But I can tell you that Andrew, and you can see it because, not just because of the building, but he can't do whatever he wants to do with staffing, with, with budgets and, you know, adding this or that. I mean, it, it, he, he, he's under Libby with the things that we don't think of, think about okay. Um, the day to day running of the office is 
yeah, it's Andrew's job, but there are, there's a threshold, okay? Um, the goal thing, I think Fritz is, is, is right about that. I think that Andrew and, and Leslie's over there writing things down right now. There is, at planning board level, when we talk about articles, is a good example of, of goals, because that's like, that's what we're doing, coming up with different changes like this year with the ROH and the 40%. And um, actually getting that solved, which I thought was pretty good because I didn't realize it was, they were right. It was less than, it was a lot less ground cover downtown than we thought. Um, but this board is a little bit different for what goals would be. And I think that staff needs to come to us with a list. I don't know if it's 10 things, 15 to us to look at at a, at a meeting and pick them. And they can have an explanation because the planning board goals is a lot easier than here. We have Mike, we got poor Derek here, thank God he's not still listening. Um, we, we have so much stuff, the, you know, this week's issue is the signs on, on Milestone Road, it, 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 all the questions, what are they doing there? I mean, we haven't had that happen since the roundabout in 2007. Um, it, we're, we're a, 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 how do I say this, we're a status board, we're a, it, we're relevant. We're, we, this, this board makes us relevant with the state. But that isn't something that we really need to dive into all the time. Every once in a while, we have to remind ourselves of it. And something like what Lauren was doing, I mean, imagine how much time she spent on that. Like, that's wow. nuts. Like, that's just money out the window. But if we didn't have the MPDC, we would, who would we be talking to about it? Cape Cod Commission? Who would we be talking to? Nobody. I mean, it's just like the steamship. All the negative stuff, and believe me, I can list a lot of it. I'd still take the way it is, because we have local say, than we would if we were under, say, Massport or something like that. So it's we're kind of like, that's the way this works. It's the same kind of a situation. Um, we don't have a lot of, we have no regulatory authority, but we have relevance authority that's how it works i was told that by frank spriggs 2004 if you want to play by their rules and take their money you gotta i mean you gotta play by the rules if you want to take the money that's what he said and he's right it that's why you see those signs out there they'll be in somebody's basement someday <laughs> so um but anyway eleanor are you telling me to hurry up? No, no, no. Oh, no, that's okay. No, I don't want to go on. I just. Uh, like you really? always do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing a, an HU proms here with you. Yeah. No, I mean, in, it's just, I just wanted to just mention Libby's relationship is strong with Andrew. It's, they don't always agree either. Um, but that's just, I think they have a good relationship, but I definitely think that the memorandum of understanding can be can be tweaked and, and, and definitely that's a joint meeting situation. Um, we have, there is, uh, well, 16 votes now for that. So um, it's, uh, I think it's, it's definitely worthwhile, but I think we definitely need to get some goals to us. Andrew, I think we should be doing that. So to a list of just something to look at for that. I just okay. want to say, I did want to say one. Yes. Um, I met with the Novak people for uh, what I was hoping was going to be 10 minutes because I had a ton going on that day. I spent yep. hours with them. Yep. I had a lot to say about all the different things that I do, and I'm one little spoke in a giant wheel. What Leslie and Andrew do is, uh, it's um, it's phenomenal. It's beyond my imagining how they can keep up with. And I'm not here to you know yeah. piggyback on your, you know. Yeah. No, I'm not even doing that. Slice bread just... and all that. But I will say, for, as from the point of view of a staff underling and supervisee, I have I came in with very little knowledge other than having been a title examiner of this world, yeah. and I have learned an unbelievable amount thanks to my ability to go to them whenever I have a question or I'm like, uh oh, I don't get this, or this is above my head, or this is beyond my ability to comprehend or whatever it is, I can go to them and they're always available to me. I've never been turned down or shot down in any way. And I get the information I need, I get the support I need. I get it from the, my fellow staff members in the, I mean, we're, we're a family there. I mean, there's some contretemps from time to time, but honestly, if 
I think it's a very well oiled machine. I used to be a title examiner. I used to go into the multiple places to get the information I needed for the firm I worked for. It was a nightmare. Yeah. A and people weren't very pleasant back in the day. It's a whole different ball of wax now. When I started working there, I was told we're about customer service. And we really are. Yeah. It's a whole, I mean, I used to be the customer, and I was always like dreading having to go to the building department, I'll be honest, <laughs> or HBC or any place, because it wasn't, I think actually planning they were nice, but it was always difficult, and it's not that way anymore. People are helpful, yeah. people show, you know, come in, and we now have these surveys around. But I just want to say, I as an employee and staff member get all the support I need from an intellectual standpoint, from an emotional standpoint, and I'm very grateful for that, because it's not a lot of, there's a lot of pressure on all of us to do too much. But we do, and we need that support and that backup and that guidance. And I, I personally am very grateful for it, so I just want to say that. I don't know that that comes out in this report, and I know I'm not the only one who expressed that point of view, who was interviewed. Yeah. No, I, I understand. I actually, Judith, just so you, you know, I don't know if you saw me, I walked over and said thank you to Julia. The other night, I mean, I was a little harsh on her at our little meetings, not not too bad, but a couple of times. But she <coughs> she was doing a job she was asked to do, she was paid to do, um, and the timing of it was unfortunate because there was a lot of transition at the time all these this information was was taken, um, and that wasn't her fault. That was not her fault. That was just it just it just happened that way, so. Um, so anyway, so is anyone else? Matt, you all right over there? I could go on forever. I know you could. <laughs> I, I could I go don't. back to the diff and tiff and, ex and explain how we didn't have the numbers and we didn't have it done and you guys had jumped the gun. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the kind of stuff that I'm saying we can't be doing. Wow. You know, and so uh, you, know, you started with that as the great example, and I can start, you know, I'll go to that as, as, the, as a great example for the, oh. for the other reason is that that would be less money for the schools well, and less money for other things. It'd well, be great because we could segregate that money for roads and maybe but it we'd get our roads, but we wouldn't have our teachers. And but so, the, so, so yeah. my point is that, that that doing some of this stuff, you know, that, that that's an example to me of something that needs to be, you know, that the numbers need to be attached and we need to under, you know, and we have to follow the process. The diff process is very specific on what you have to do. The applications in before the select board or the town meeting even sees it. And we were trying to run that. To, we were trying to run that to people before we even got the information. Behind. Well, the diff. So, so that's a, that's the point I'm saying. Is it, well, I'm not saying it was wrong. It was not. We didn't have enough information to know, know whether it was, it was right or wrong. It was what it boiled down to, Matt. It was too much work for people. That's exactly what it was. Yeah, probably yes. Go ahead. I mean, and not to go. You know, I don't want to get. Yeah, I know. Tip for tail here, but yep. um, you know, my response to that is we got absolutely no support from the town providing information actually we got blocked from providing the information about the finances um, and then it was impossible to move forward yeah so I mean that that was a suggestion again about how to fund transportation that I don't think got enough of a look on either side so but it, there's yeah. there's there's other factors I mean that sounded very one-sided and I I think you know that the finance, um, they took a very early and quick position not to even look at it. So, what was, in, so in that case, in, in, that's, in, true. That, that's my point. In that case, then, then that's where the connect, then the, that connection has to be made. You know, if there's things like that that you, you, you need backup on and need the work done to, to before we bring it to town meeting, before we declare it the best thing ever, then we should have that work done prior. And so the communication would be something that would help that. And then we'd all be making a decision, you know, with the right stuff, not, you oh. know, and, and that's all I'm saying. And well, I think there's times yeah. where it, where either side of this equation has jumped the gun. Well, we don't have to, right. one of the things about when diff came up, we were like, the tax hit was just going to happen on cough and pit. And I remember going down to see Debbie and I said, when does this hit? And she told me the date, you know, and I'm like, so we, cough and pit was the, there was, Richmond was like the last one that would have ever made sense to do this on the Nantucket. But Coffin Pit was the first one because you're taking a piece of dirt that was basically paying nothing in taxes and all of a sudden the entire place is paying lots of taxes. 
I forgot what the number of Richmond. What was what was the Goac? It was at fifty six thousand a year total, and then it's going to be like, I forgot what the number ended up. Matt, it's insane what it was. What it's going to be when it's fully built, and it was in the way the diff worked, as I recall, it's it was just limited to certain. You could sort of pick and choose what you wanted it to pay for the percentage. The town wasn't losing the tax base. It was going to come back once the the dip bond was paid down, whatever it was going to pay. So it's it's but it's it's water under the dam now because we're never going to be able to do it anyway. Because there's nothing left that big that's ever going to happen. So it's, it's, and, and it was a good learning process. Right. I don't want to go into the next item, but I mean yep. this is about that the Novak report. Yeah, I know. And again. You know, the staff has different opinions of what was put into that report. Yeah. Um, we've, you know, it, in terms of it generating some ideas to develop future data and other things, great. And there's certain parts of it that, you know, are, are on target, certain parts that generated some additional thought and certain yeah. parts that are, in my opinion, poorly done and not part of the original um, RFP that was sent out. So, again, I haven't had a full opportunity to go over all of the um, suggestions, but I do think the idea, I, do, I really bristle at the idea that, you know, I'm not answerable or whatever. I'm, I've always been answerable to the Planning Commission, um, and there are multiple goals and objectives embedded in the master plan, in this bombardment of other reports that come out during, during the course of the year. So. Um, Am I happy for defined goals? Absolutely. Yeah, I think. But there's a series of uh, you know, defined goals that are included in the review. So yeah. that's as much my work as your work as well. Yeah, I mean, I think what I was trying to establish, especially with David on now, and sort of a sort of a more of a, a, a sort of a we're looking at this a little bit more cl closely because of the Novak report and so forth. But there's a difference between the planning board goals and the commission, and it is harder to figure out. We were doing, when we were doing all the area plans, I mean, we were doing one every two or three years. Tom Nevis, Matticate, all those things that we did out there, that all get forgotten, the zoning changes that we made to help Matticate. Um, I, st I think Quidnet is one we need to bring back. Um, not because Judith is here, but because of the the past, we tried to. Uh, we had. Um, There's nobody there. The what's wizard. the guy's name that we that was helping us with that process there for a while to try to sort of create like a little village VR yep. district there, so we don't get the pools and the you know full build out because it's not really erosion in that area. That's going to get picked at a little at a time in that Sac Pond Road loop. Um, you know, what do we do about Quidnet Road? There's one for Jack. It's not a real road. There's no layout out there. It's a total disaster. We got one little piece from uh, Eagers right. recently. But that's about it. I mean, I was always told, don't be surprised what Quidnet Road isn't really a road. Okay. And that's true. I mean, there's a lot of interesting things that we can still look at, Andrew. We have the one of the articles at town meeting that we need to talk about. I think is a commission issue as well because of the area plan part. We've never reopened an area plan before because <coughs> we they haven't been around that long, but I think that we're getting close to that. We saw an issue in Tom Nevis at one of our planning board meetings that was shocking where people that live out there didn't know what the covenant program was, which I was shocked. And I thought that that was eye-opening and definitely something we should be looking at at the commission level because of the area plan so but with that said um i think that we staff has their um you know i think we've made enough points about goals and fritz's point with um with that so judith has always got ideas always coming up with something and um we definitely are more engaged now so I don't think there's going to be any lack of thinking. Um, so do we, I mean, is everyone okay with sort of tabling this or moving on to the next thing? And I mean, there's nothing to vote on, so I'm just saying, how do we want to end this item? I don't want to just end it. I want to make sure everyone is okay with that. 
Judith? I was just going to say, I hope you, uh, I hope Andrew would tell us areas where he finds disagreements uh, with what's there so we can learn from that. Sure. I mean, what I would propose is you know, after I meet with the town manager, we can, I can report out on those conversations where we are, um, you know, what we're moving forward with as, as part of it. And then at some point, we'll try to schedule a joint meeting where you can have a more detailed discussion about the governance issues, I guess. Um, I do think you should review the, at least to update, well, again, the memorandum of agreement needs to be updated. It's, it's out of date in that it, you know, it included some other departments that aren't there. So is that something you want to meet and sort of update? Because if we, if we don't stick with the plus model, you don't need a, an agreement like that. I mean, I don't think the town is prepared to not have the plus agreement. I mean, we're sort of in, it's baked in. I mean, we don't even have a building. I mean, I mean, someday the town administration may be out here at two fairgrounds. It's possible, Matt. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> it's very yeah, likely it, to happen. It should, all, and it, should be, it should be on one campus somewhere. So. I, I, I agree. I mean, because remember the whole thing with yeah, out of town. Everything it's everything. very possible, and that's going to happen in our lifetime. That'll be the next big one. So it'll be like the stop and shop flip the store into the front. I mean, that's how it will be. So, and we had that modeling and renderings with the water company wing and all that. So, but anyway, so, but I think this is a healthy discussion to have. I, I, we haven't really had any in-depth discussion about all this stuff until now as a group with the, with the new people like Fritz and Judith on. And um, I think it's important because it's, I mean, I'm really, I mean, I, this is where why I'm here. I mean, this stuff matters to me big time, and, and and I, quite frankly, have been through so many different things that I, I feel like I'm coming back like as a as a you know I don't know historian of this. So but, I mean, I remember when Aaron senior I remember when Aaron Makovich wanted to talk about economic development. Now I know we don't want any more economic development. <laughs> we want to stop it. <laughs> So he used to say that all the time. What are we going to do some economic development now? Now you don't even want to talk about it. C cultural district, Andrew, we got that. Can so, I just, yes. Uh, one question, uh, Andrew. Let, let me just follow up. Do you think it would be productive for us as a group to meet? I mean, not meet with you to put on the agenda the the agreement and talk about it, just sure. have a discussion of it? Yeah. I mean, I'm asking you. Do you think that would be helpful? I, I am. I think that should be part of your June agenda. Okay. Uh, put it on the agenda for yeah. June? Oh, you'll have some some notes or, you know, talking points about it, though. Because yes. has everybody read that agreement? Okay. Uh, it, yeah. it, it, it's, yeah. it is actually very well written, yeah. um, by the way. Uh, uh, Especially uh, at the time, it really yeah. fit what was happening. And, and I would really hope that it's going to be on the agenda in June that everybody will read it and be prepared to, so that they understand what it says and have. Um, yeah, yeah, that would be great, Alan. I was yeah. just going to ask if you could do that so we don't have to dig into the. Yeah, so that we can have a good discussion and then at least you'll know where we individually or sure. collectively seem to be coming from. Right. Okay. And I okay. intend to you know, provide a staff recommendation on it as well. So okay. Yeah. You'll know. It's a it's a it's a it's an evolving document. So I don't know if Leslie you know Leslie um, certainly participated in that she kinda wrote it. Um, some level. No no back study. I don't know. Leslie did you have anything to add? Um yeah I would oh, just add okay. that there was a lot in the study that I didn't feel accurately portrayed our office as it is today, which we you all kind of talked about like context of it, it was written at a time that we had kind of a major staff person on administrative leave. There was some angst in the office and in the public. And I feel like some of the surveys reflected that. And I think if the study was redone today, it would come out in a more positive light. Um, in fact, we have been doing our own survey. It was with Andrew or Alan Martin. Um, that we've been giving out to people, and we've gotten almost 100 
170 responses so far, and if you don't mind, I'll just read a few. Um, so we have some emojis for you. Can <laughs> how happy you are with the service that you oh, and you go to my so so we've been doing a customer service satisfaction survey it's available at the front desk and it's totally anonymous there's a box where you know people can drop their responses and so far we have about 170 and most people are ranking nines or tens as far as their happiness um, and here's some of the responses that we're getting. Um, you know, staff's very nice and helpful. Staff here is great. I scheduled another appointment. They're so professional. Um, excellent service, excellent knowledge, very helpful. And our administrative staff is just getting, you know, a lot of positive reviews, which I think is really great because they're really the first faces that you see. And most of the people who are coming in are coming in to do research and drop off permits and pick up permits. and. I just think it's a really positive experience now. And when Andrew and I first uh, started out back in 2012, um, it, it wasn't like that at all. And we were with Libby and we were at a meeting with the Builders Association and you know people were very upset about the service they were getting and the level of service they were getting in and out of the office relative to not the planning piece, but health and HDC and building. And now, at least you know, with the departments that we're involved with, um, it's been a huge turnaround. And it's been a long time. And it's been a lot of heartache <laughs> along the way. Um, but you know, I think we're in a really good place. And uh, I think it's positive for the customers and the public. OK. Well, thank you, Leslie, very much for that. Um, I won't belabor this any longer, so we'll move on, I think. Andrew, you're good, right? You, Eleanor, can I'll you? I'll make sure it's on the agenda, and I'll send and, it out. And could you just, yeah, send that out as soon as you can so everyone can read that and just sort of have it before, well before the next meeting. Okay, so now on to Andrew's review. Um, I mean, we sort of already talked about it. <laughs> for half an hour. <laughs> but I mean, it, it actually it's good that we did because it's easier to, to just dive into this after that conversation than it is to start from scratch. So does anyone have any comments on? Other um, I have that right here. In this, oh, it's in the regular packet? Yep. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh, you're talking to Mike, sorry. Mike's just, Mike's so much. Um, so, anyone have any comments on Andrew's review? Um, just, yeah, I, go ahead, I, Matt. I made mine, you know, sort of earlier. I think that it's an improvement. I think the the system is is an improvement. Uh, I think doing it is in sort of our role. I think there are some questions in there that. You know, you're saying people said you know, they, they didn't do it. I did it, but there are yeah. certain things I don't feel. I no, I meant feel. past. I, understand. I wasn't talking about this group. But, uh, but I understand. But there, was, <laughs> okay. there were some questions there that I didn't feel comfortable yeah. answering. I don't think I have enough information to answer what, you know, certain day to day operational things there are really not my purview. Uh, I think I, I try yeah. to get mostly answered questions having to do with sort of, you know, this board and what comes to us here and. Those types of things, but it was hard. It's hard for me to evaluate you know, the day-to-day -day, the day operations at Plus and yeah. how what the interaction with the building department is or the HDC or whatever. I don't, you know, I think that's more, you know, that's you know, so that, so I, I so I kind of looked at it as sort of two things. I think that purview really is Libby, and I think sort of the MPEDC PDC purview should be us and and. You know, and that so that split. So I think you know, it could be a little clearer in the evaluation process. I think I don't even have the answer. I just sort of yeah. that was how I my head my head was around it. It's hard to answer some of those questions. Yeah, go ahead, Andrew. I, I do want to just point out that you know for the first time we did do I did reach out to the staff, and that's on page two ninety of your uh, packet to get some feedback from them. Um, 
uh, 11 of the 20 employees responded. Um, and that's anonymous. That was open to. I put my glasses anybody. back on here again. Um, I, and the town manager did um, submit a review, um, which some, a couple of you have looked at and uh, is available, um, which was, you know, positive. I'm, you know, I have no arguments with it whatsoever. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that, so I think at least on those two fronts, we've, again, the process has improved. I, again, support a written um, I've always supported a written recommendation. Um, the board drifted away from that, again, not at my suggestion, at their own at the, at the time, which, you know, this is, it's a process to fill out the forms and people don't like some of the questions and whatever, but um, that has been consistent since, you know, over four contract review periods and certainly that's the same form that's being used by Town manager and the form that I use with my employees. So I'm open to looking at another type of or other questions or suggestions on that. Um, I don't know that I'm completely open to something completely foreign that no other, none of my colleagues, yep. you know, it's there was a discussion in the first Novak report of a more standardized uh, review and other things for town employees, which has never been, you know, hasn't advanced. So I'm, I'm open to suggestions on it. I'm, you know, the, the staff thing is, is something new, it's something I discussed with town council and he was like, well, could be good. I'm not, I'm not unhappy with the responses that I got. So, um, but I, I think our office, I mean, I, I'm very proud of the accomplishments we made. I think it's clear, we need to be clear here that this is the period that ended on um, January 31st, and that we're in a new cycle now, which you'll be reviewing in February of 19. So the, Nova, the second Novak report came out outside of that. We're sort of yeah. immersed in that right now. But we're kind of four months overdue here, and um, I, I would ask that, you know, again, I would ask if we could move along. This is, this is part of our agreement with each other in my contract, and um, you know, I think it's vastly improved over the last year for the people that want to see it written now. Mm -hmm. so. Yes, Fritz. Um, <clears throat> I had the same, uh, as to the particular form, um, I had the same reaction as Matt did, that there were questions, I was being asked questions that I was absolutely had no frame of reference to be even answering them, nor should I be involved in those uh, what you know the kind of what the uh, questions were directed at. Um, so I guess I just make a, a suggestion that perhaps going forward that f for this group that could be modified to uh, relate more to global type things and probably specifically address um, whatever goals we do agree upon an assessment uh, or an evaluation based upon whether those goals were achieved or how well they were achieved. That, that to me would be more significant, I think, is from the, other than, you know, how do you deal day to day with day -day. The, the people in the office, which I wouldn't have any idea, you know, about. Okay. Yes, John. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. We're, we are on. The annual review for yeah okay mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I know we're we're going back and forth with the Novak reporting et cetera so I want to make I just want to be clear yeah um, I'm just going to summarize a little bit uh, in the last five years a lot of changes to the island we've had two dispensaries Richmond approval for uh, the uh, large development there we have a new hospital. We have a new elementary school, so many buildings. We have uh, 40B continued efforts to build here. We have um, Tacoma Green, town-sponsored housing. We're, we are an island very unique from the rest of the mainland and the planning directors that, that they have to deal with. I, I think we are, maybe Martha's Vineyard an island, same type of uh, uh, atmosphere that uh, Andrew deals with here. And after 25 years of being in contracting, 
in that in that office there. Uh, when it was downtown and now it's out of town, uh, in real estate, being in that office, and now on volunteer boards, planning, economic development, et cetera. I have to say, in my, in all honesty, I haven't seen it run more smoothly than it is right now. Not that there's not always room for improvement, not that Andrew shouldn't be open to suggestions, goals, I agree with everything. That's pretty much all you hear from me, and I think a 3% raise is justified, and my own opinion would be I'd be in favor of that. That's all I'll say. Anyone else have anything? I've said enough before, so. <laughs> is that a motion? Was John's comment a motion? Um, I'd like to make an motion if we're done discussing. I'd like to make no. a motion that we approve Andrew's contract with the 3% raise that he's asked for. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Yamas, yeah, Eleanor. <coughs> Thank you very much, Eleanor. Okay. Um, great. And I listen, I appreciate this. I just want to say that Andrew was buying tonight. Jesus. Just throw it right out there. After his drink, I think he should be buying tonight. I've never had a drink with Andrew. I know. I know. I mean, I've had a couple over 15 years. I sent him pictures of Martinis when I was somewhere. I had new business with them. Yes. No, no, I know. We're not done yet. You guys are packing up. No, no, we're not ready yet. No, 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 no. He said to the bar. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, just, Paul, Wendy. so in terms of the goals, is that an item that will carry over for <coughs> June, or there were goals outlined in my memo? Do you need more time to think about that? I mean, if you it's could, fine. if you, you think you could send that out, sort of a sure with the with the plus so agreement, Eleanor, if you don't yeah. mind, yeah. yeah. The plus agreement, just send out so we can read it, and then the goals, yeah. you know, just to resend it so that we have it as a separate just, 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 just thing comment. to look at. Your, your comments, not yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. just that. Okay. When did you, what did you have? Yeah, I just have two two things. Um, as you remember, like you talked about Linda Dunleavy coming, um, she's yep. chairing the Rural Policy Advisory Commission. We have a deliverable for... August um, to give a report like th that was the charge Should of that commission to the governors um, to make recommendations. Um, so we're putting together like a, kind of a, a topic thing. There's about 20 different topics. This is a template like so there's a page on like climate change on retail on you know Wi-Fi access, etc. How things were going to affect rural that, that's kind of the format we came up with to deliver our report. Um, so I'm working on the retail one uh, and maybe one other, depending on how it shakes out. But I wanted to make everybody aware um, that that is a thing in progress. And there, the next Rural Policy Advisory Commission meeting is on Martha's Vineyard on June 10th. <coughs> and everyone's always invited to attend. So if you feel like coming over, um, it's in Oak Bluffs. The boat mm -hmm. works to go back and forth in a day. So I wanted to like just put that out there and invite you guys. Um, and the other thing is I just got put on the governor's economic development Council, through my role on the um, the Retailers Association of Massachusetts, they put out an ask for people, you know, like small business people in particular, t that would be willing to serve on that commission. And I was like, well, I'm already on the rural policy, so you probably don't want me. And they're like, no, we like you, so. <laughs> no, we like your opinion. And they honestly didn't have very many small business, so. Um, so that just met. I got sworn in on Monday, and there's a series of listening sessions being held around the state right now. Okay. Um, there were a couple this week. There's a. Um, Dartmouth one actually this Thursday but the most apropos for us um, in our region is on the Cape and it's in Chatham on Tuesday June 4th from 12 to 2 and I can get this to Eleanor and she can send it out for a reminder there's there's a link to register but you they really just want everyone to show up so don't worry too much if you feel like this one is on economic development um, and this one hasn't actually, it's like the deliverable by December. They just want like ideas. They did it, they do it every four years. And what came out of the last one was a lot of workforce, like some bills, they'll put together bills that could help. Um, on the retailer side, there's a lot of concern about the Family and Medical Leave Act, how it you know, adversely affects small business. There's um, a lot of stuff like that. 
So it's really just brainstorming and gathering at this point. It's kind of like what's on anybody's mind. Um, if we don't want to do any economic development, <laughs> if we want to slow it down here, like you said, we send a letter. Right. Um, can, can we send it in writing? Do we have to show up? You can send comments. Oh, you can definitely send comments. I would say probably through through me. me I, I don't know why I say that. Um, Absolutely not to me. Just um, <laughs> too, I mean, too late. Um, too late. I think, I think if you want you me to say anything, <laughs> if you want me to say anything that day or like get it raised in public, I'm happy to do that. If somebody can't make it, but um, absolutely, there's a lot of they're really seeking a lot of input um, from anybody. I'm about what I'd say. No, not at all. Not not even remotely. Just does no, not I don't know why I said that way. <laughs> Everything I stand. I can't for. remember the person's name in the office. There's several staff people that are standing by for your comments. So, <laughs> so thanks. Just want to mention that. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Congratulations. Anyone else have anything? Um, I just want to quickly just want to go one more little thing. I seen you sent us stuff that was in the paper this week. I that hasn't. Nothing's really been written much, and all of a sudden, poof, there was a big piece. But that was actually like two meetings ago, the guy's stuff that he wrote. And there's a lot of stuff going on with this now. Um, this has been actually quite an experience for me to go to these meetings and kind of be part of this. Looking at the property on Crooked Lane, um, it's kind of getting more serious because there's a, there was a review. Somebody's coming over here for the town, Matt. And they, I think they're getting sent over there to kind of for an hour to run through there for an extra 300 bucks because they're already on the island for something else, mm -hmm. which I thought was great, Rachel. That was Rachel's idea. Um, I, you know, I just didn't want you to see that and me not talk about it, even though I'm on from the capital programs committee. This is important. This, this senior center thing is a big deal. These, these people want this. And now that I realize what goes on down at the Salt Marsh Center, I mean, I don't go down to the Salt Marsh Center, all right? But it's small, and they have to put everything away when they're done down there. This, they need something. When that, when that uh, Nantucket Inn fell through, everything got focused on this other property, and it's quite something. If anyone wants to, is interested in this, um, I'd contact Rachel uh, Day, and I think that she could get you a, a tour of Billy's house. It's unbelievable. This place is really, it, it's bigger than I thought. I've been there before, but I never really looked at it this way. It's interesting. Um, it's going to be coming up, you know, for discussion at select board level pretty soon. So um, you'll be hearing more about it. That's why I brought up, Mike, about Crooked Lane. No bike path. <coughs> and the bus does not travel through Crooked Lane. I thought that was the strangest comment I'd ever heard. I'm like, it doesn't? Nope doesn't go through Crooked Lane. So all that stuff with your human service, mm -hmm. you know, elderly stuff, it all came up the other day, and I'm sitting there going, the bus doesn't go through Crooked Lane. It never even occurred to me to think that. So that's why I asked you those questions the other day, because that's going to start coming in your direction if this happens. So, so that's it. Anyone else? Thank you for putting up with us there. Okay. Now we're going to the bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank I'm you, joking. everyone. <laughs> Let's go fresh. I'm an equal opportunity. You know. oh,